Hello and welcome to another M19 draft on Magic Arena. This is Old Man Pool. I'm still enjoying this format quite a bit, so jumping back in yet again. I'm not actually sure what I want out of this pack. I swear, my, I've had some good luck in drafts, but my, my first pick rares have not been on point in this format. Definitely not. Uh, Detection Tower is really not something that I think we can consider here. We have a couple of gold cards that maybe are our most powerful. I do like Draconic Disciple quite a bit. Not sure it's something you're really very happy to first pick, but in its respective deck it is very good. Enigma Drake also is a pretty high upside. There is just Strangling Spores here, which is very fine removal. It doesn't kill some of the biggest, scariest stuff in the format, like I'd be much happier if this was something like Lich's Caress. But Strangling Spores is good. This You do need interaction. There are things like the Auras deck running around, aggressive decks. So having even sort of mediocre like cost removal is important in this set. I think we're going to take something high power here and maybe stray away from it though and kind of see which direction it takes us. I kind of want to try blue-red a little bit more. I've done Draconic Disciple a number of times. I think the Draconic Disciple is a better first pick than Enigma Drake, but I think I'm going to take the Drake and be a little bit speculative here. See if this takes us down a, a fun deck route. Okay, and following it up immediately with Luminous Bonds, Dwindle, Skyscanner, maybe is in contention there. I don't think there's anything else in this pack that's really very good. That Desecrated Tube is another pretty bad rare. And a bunch of cards that are like good in their respective decks, like I think Wall of Mist has a home, Goblin Motivator has a home, Sure Strike, Inspired Charge, Mind Rot. These are all things that some decks want. I think I'm just going to take Luminous Bonds. I think it is the highest upside. Dwindle actually is kind of close, but Bonds is really, really nice in that it just right away takes away any um, attacker or blocker. It's better in aggressive decks than Dwindle is, although Blue isn't aggressive all that often. The Dwindle does fit a little better with Enigma Drake, but I think I'm just going to take the higher power level card and not get super, super married to the first pick. There's an Omniscience. That's funny. There's yeah three pretty unexciting rares in a row. However, we now have an Electrify, which third pick is... A little bit of a sign. I I guess without a rare, you take like murder out of this pack. I'm not sure there's too many comments I take over Electrify. Let's just Crest is one of them. But well, let's take the Electrify. I think it's very good removal. Happy to have it in an Enigma Drake deck. Happy to have it in eh, a red white deck too, if that's what comes together. Ooh, and there's Gutter Snipe. Are we doing it? I think we gotta do it. So I've already done a Gutter Snipe deck once in the form, but it's so sweet. Like, I just love playing for it. And even if you don't end up in massively in spells, if you do end up being aggressive, Gutter Snipe can still get in for, like, four or six damage sometimes in a game. If you just, like, Trumpet Blast with a Gutter Snipe in play, all of a sudden your opponent's taking a lot of extra damage. This can lead to some pretty stupid hands. Like, I think I had, like, two creatures on the battlefield, did, like, 14 damage with a couple of spells. It was pretty good. Bargard Brute might just be a better card, but Gutter Snipe is definitely a more fun card. So I think it's what we're going to take. Okay, yeah, there's there's some red here. If we had taken that Draconic Disciple early on, I think you could take Druid of the Cal, and I maybe still should. There's Inferno Hellion, which actually is a little bit better than I first would have guessed, and a Marauder's Axe. Axe is very good in pretty much any beatdown deck. I think this is something that you want a lot of the time. It's just lined up pretty well in the format. I actually haven't played with it too much, but pretty much any time it's been played against me, it's been good and I felt bad about it. So, probably gonna take that here. Take the Marauder's Axe. Now, we've got a Viachino Pyromancer, which I th think we're probably in red, maybe unsure about white or blue at this point. So, I'm not gonna take things like Gearsmith Guardian or Tlern Scholar. We're just gonna take Pyromancer and maybe try and shy a little bit aggressive. Even though Pyromancer is not necessarily like a spell's target to go along with Gutter Snipe, they both do some incidental damage to your opponent's face, and that's pretty good. I do have to apologize if you guys can hear kind of a grinding noise in the background. I've got some construction going on in my uh, apartment complex, and they actually took off our door today, so not too much I can do about that, unfortunately, but hopefully it's not distracting too much from the audio. There is Trumpet Blast in this pack, which is kind of really whatever. We could take Totally Lost. Works well with Enigma Drake and Gutter Snipe. One with the Sheen, we maybe should take. This is powerful, although you really need to be pretty base blue, because I think you need to have the Gearsmith Guardians to be really, really happy with it. It's kind of a late Blood Divination. This card's been impressive to me. I think we're just going to take Totally Lost and maybe not force it with one with the Machine, though. 
Okay, Hostile Minotaur, or we take Anticipate. Another good card that works with Gutter Snipe. Yeah, I think we're going to start leaning farther and farther that direction. There is a Novice Knight, which is definitely a solid card as well, but Red-Blue seems sweet. Let's see if we can't make a Red-Blue deck work. So there's a Stone Quarry, which we could take here and maybe splash Luminous Bonds. That is pretty high upside. I think both the Ogre and Havoc Devils are pretty replaceable. Disperse is a little bit better, especially with Gutter Snipe. We want to take the Stone Quarry, though. I mean, Luminous Bonds is pretty good. Even though it doesn't directly synergize with Gutter Snipe, it's just very solid removal. On the other hand, if we're being aggressive, we're a little bit less likely to want to play it. Although, with Enigma Drake and Gutter Snipe, maybe we're a little bit slower than a lot of, like, damage dealing decks. I think I'm going to take the Quarry. I think I'm most likely to want it there. I could see taking Disperse, though, as well. Ooh, so there's Double Cast if we want to get really spicy. This is... Probably just not good, although, I mean, if you use it on Electrify or something, you do end up getting there, kind of. Still does cost you a card, though, and it's very, very bad if you don't have another spell in hand. Could take Goblin Motivator. This is quite good if you're aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Totally Lost is kind of replaceable, especially since we already have one. I think I'm going to take the Motivator here. I'm not sure this is something we'll end up playing, but I can definitely see wanting to have it. Probably Lightning Mare this time around. This is not a real exciting card, but it's not terrible. If your opponent's playing like a Blue Walls deck, it can't randomly really, really ruin their day. So, they got Trumpet Blast over not too much else. And I guess Catalyst Elemental over Lava Axe. Eh, they're both pretty bad. I guess I'll take Catalyst Elemental. Eh, they're both pretty bad. Okay. Oh, well, we opened up uh, another Lathless. This is... We have not seen very many, like, I was complaining earlier about not having enough exciting rares in pack one. I feel like we've opened Lathless when we're in red a lot, too, so maybe we can't complain too much. Arcane Encyclopedia is pretty good. You, It is bad against some matchups. If your opponents are quite aggressive, you can lose it here. But I think that's the second most exciting card, because this is just the nut against some decks as well. I think you really like to have this as an option, because even if you're sideboarding it out in some games, some games they'll just win you the game when nothing else could have. Uh, let's take a Lathless, though. Excellent. High cost, high power level card. So there's Gearsmith Guardian. There is a Knightly Valor if we wanted to give up on blue, which we could do. We're definitely heavier on red right now. We're giving up on, like, Tolarian Scholar's not very exciting, Anticipate's okay, Totally Lost's okay, Enigma Drake, depending on which way our deck goes, ends up being okay. I don't really like Lightning Mare, none of these red cards are very exciting. Gearsmith Guardian, the Prodigy are not great either. Prodigy can be good if you're really beat down, but you need a lot of, like, Marauder's Axe and Artifacts to go along with it. Knightly Valor, on the other hand, I think is just a really, really good top-end card. Makes any of your creatures, like you stick this on a Viachino Pyromancer and all of a sudden it's a real threat late in the game. And it does help you go wide for things like Trumpet Blast. And I think that red-white, if we could segue into it, is one of the better colors or color combinations. So I think I'm going to go for Knight Knightly Valor over not too much else in that in that pack. And there's a Make a Stand, which is also pretty good. Also a Cavalry Drillmaster. We're not doing fantastic on two drops for an aggressive shell. Although we're maybe a little bit unusual too, since we're maybe playing like Lathless and maybe Knightly Valor and some more expensive cards. I think I'm going to take Make a Stand though. Our, our blue is just not that exciting so far. It hasn't felt like particularly open. So, eh, if we can segue into to white, I'm not unhappy about that. Okay, yeah, there's a Goblin Instigator, one of the better cards in this archetype as well. Uh, not too much else. If we had stuck the course with blue, we might be starting to try and get like Gearsmith Guardians. Aviation Pioneer's not bad too. Actually, it probably actually, given that we don't have any artifacts, we take the Pioneer first, but I think Goblin Instigator is a pretty nice pickup. Well, there is another Enigma Drake. We have one Trumpet Blast already, so we don't necessarily need to pick up another one. Act of Treason is nice, but I think a lot of times we'll get an opportunity to grab one later as well. Blue's not too exciting. How many spells do we have, though? Anticipate, make a stand, maybe, although those are going in different directions. I think Gutter Snipe's not actually looking fantastic here, either. I mean, we could just take Enigma Drake because it's the most, like, potentially powerful card in the pack. Maybe we get a couple of more, like, Electrifies or Shocks or something, we end up going that direction. I'm not missing out on much in white. Explosive Apparatus is really the only thing that gives me pause. This card is not fantastically efficient, but it is not bad, too. So I could maybe take that. 
I think the Drake has enough upside though that let's take that and still maybe keep a, a toe in a in red blue here. So we took Luminous Bonds pretty early, make a stand and Knightly Valor. We're early-ish in the pack there. Hmm. Essence Scatter is quite good and works very, very well with things like Enigma Drake. Yeah, I think we're gonna take that over our second like axe or an omen speaker or something. Let's take an essence scatter. And not much here. Maybe a mighty leap now and still keep it up in the air which direction we're gonna end up going with our second color. I do think Mighty Leaf's better than Ages of the Heavens, Tectonic Rift, Trumpet Blast, and Callous Elemental are all kind of unexciting. Let's take the leap. There's a Crash Through, an Invoke Divine, and Explosive Apparatus, and another Motivator for what that's worth. This card comes around quite late. I think I might be on Team Apparatus now. Having Invoke the Divine as a sideboard option is pretty nice. I don't know. I'm really not sure if we're going to end up going into white, though. We'd have to get like a heroic reinforcements or something first pick to maybe try and shift towards it. Which I think we still can. Like we have so many red cards that we can kind of meander back and forth between uh white and blue and not feel too bad about it here. Crash through works really well with Enigma Drake. And works really well with Gutter Snipe. Hmm, maybe, maybe we even take Crash Through. Alright. And I'm not sure about that pick though, for sure. There's a cancel, which is fine, and a sure strike, which is fine. I think I'm more on team sure strike. Turns our like random goblin instigator tokens into a real force. Again, another great way of comboing damage with gutter snipe. Sure. And Gearsmith Prodigy, still not looking great to me. This card can be good, and I think if you do just like really, really aggressively draw them or uh, draft them and all the cheap artifacts you can get there. Like, I think we could have had a good deck for Gearsmith Prodigy, but not really sure we're there now. I think we're still going to take it over Catalyst Elemental or Lava Axe, though. Yeah, I think I think we're going to give up on white. And just say, hey, we are, we are true blue, red blue. Mostly with red here. But I th think that white has just not seemed very open at all. Wall of Mist not real likely to make the cut, but I guess we've got it. And probably want a second trumpet, trumpet Blast more, although, yeah, have all the Trumpet Blasts. Ooh, well, Dwarf is very good, but I think we gotta, gotta let that one go. So there's a Volley Veteran, which we do have, like, a couple of Goblin Motivators. We might play one of those. It's kind of it, other than the uh, Instigator, which is pretty good. Holy Veteran is very, very high upside, and if we get another couple of goblins, maybe we should take that, since when you when this is a flame tongue Kavu, it's just stupid good. But Siegebreaker Giant is pretty powerful too, and I think I'm not unhappy having that. It's kind of funny, we're kind of a low curve, sort of aggressive looking deck, except for with a couple of top end cards. But if our top end cards are Siegebreaker Giant and Lathless, that's pretty solid. Thorclaw would be excellent if we were in green, but I think we uh Cannot make the shift at this point. Okay, another Vishino Pyromancer, I think, for curve considerations? Hmm. It's close, though. Horizon Scholar is another expensive card, but a powerful one. Let's see. Don't really want all these Trauma Blasts, probably. Don't really want, like, Smelt. We could just play a little bit of a slower deck and be... Blue red, but blue red with the intention of kind of dirtling around, killing my opponent with things like Enigma Drake in our top end. In which case, Horizon Scholar is probably better than the Pyromancer there. Maybe I like that a little bit better. Horizon Scholar, I mean, taking the Pyromancer over Horizon Scholar feels pretty bad. This card is just very powerful. So yeah, all right, maybe we're maybe we're just not aggressive after all. And Sleep's actually a pretty nice pickup here. Can definitely let us go for a late final games uh, like swing. Yeah. Pretty easy pickup, I think. Another Enigma Drake. Okay, well. At this point, we just play like all of our Enigma Drakes and like any more anticipates or anything we get. I guess I'm happy I took that crash through and I did. I think we're taking it. I mean, there's Bone Dash here, but Drake's dot deck. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, Pyromancer at this point. Dragon Age is okay, but it... We're still trying to get some damage through on our opponent, and Dragon Egg, frequently your opponent can just ignore if they're a little bit more controlling, at least until the very late parts of the game. Maybe Explosive Apparatus. We are really light on removal here. We have one Essence Scatter, one Electrify. 
totally lost. That's kind of it, right? We're not really likely to get anything else premiere. How many two drops do we actually have? We don't like Wall of Mist. We've got, I guess, three. I think we want more. I think I'm gonna take the Pyromancer. There's been a lot of explosive apparatus that's kind of like, oh, it's kind of close, and then we've passed, so we may end up getting burned for not having enough removal. Snapping Drake seems okay in this deck, at least the way it's kind of shaping up to look. I think we want it more than another Frilled Sea Serpent or a Prodigy here. Okay, and Disperse is actually a pretty nice pickup as well. Just another nice spell to kind of fuel our synergies, and it's nice little bit of interaction for a deck that's pretty light on interaction. Don't think we need the Frilled Sea Serpent. I think we're okay on our top end already. We really want the Ogre. Pretty unexciting. We're not going to play these cards if we can avoid it. We have four three drops already. Eh, maybe we won against a more aggressive deck. There's Uncomfortable Chill, which is kind of nice because it draws us a card. So that can work well with things like Gutter Snipe. We could take another Sure Strike. Sure Strike works well with our more aggressive cards. It can help us force through some damage. I think it's probably just a better card. Okay, another Totally Lost, which we only have one of. And then Horizon Scholar and Tolerant Scholar. Or sorry, uh, Horizon Scholar. Scholar of Stars. Horizon Scholar is quite a bit better. There's a lot of Scholars in blue. I hadn't really thought about it. Scholars.deck over here. Could take another Meandering River. Actually, we're getting slow enough that maybe Luminous Bonds is where we want to be now. Especially because we're kind of light on removal. Actually feels a little bit better. Uh, Scholar. Not hoping to play it. Right. Oh, I guess we should have taken that smelt. That was a little bit of a... I was clicking a little bit too quickly. We have one in the sideboard, though, so... If we really, really want it, we can have one. Okay, right now we're at 47 playables. Why do we have black? We have Severn's Brighton. Random stupid cards in here that we don't want. Don't think this is a motivator deck. Just don't think we got quite aggressive enough for it. I do not hate two sure strikes, though. Probably only one Trumpet Blast. It's pretty bad if we don't get enough creatures, and I could see this being a deck where we don't actually always draw a ton of creatures. I Do I want 18 lands? This is not a deck that I would have thought wants 18. Probably not, since we have things like Anticipate and Crash Through. We do want to get up to 6 mana, for sure, for some of our, our best effects. But we don't want to run low on gas, too. And since we have a little bit of card draw, I think 17 seems okay. So let's add in our Stone Quarry and our Luminous Bonds. Probably not make a stand, although this card has been quite impressive to me. And what are we sitting at then? We've got how many lands right now? That's 15, 17. Probably do want to be heavier on red than blue, so that's probably correct. And we've got to cut three cards, three cards. Instigator, Pyromancer, Lightning Mare. Maybe Lightning Mare is a cut. I have tons and tons of two drops. What's our like creature count looking like? 12 non-creatures, 14 creatures. Maybe Lightning Mare is still something we want to get rid of. Maybe if we do, we cut like one Sure Strike too. Or maybe we just cut Trumpet Blast. Maybe Sure Strike's gonna be better or more likely to attack with single threats. Yeah, this is actually not looking much like a Trumpet Blast deck. And Lightning Mare is I just, I hate the fact that it's double red. It makes it really hard to cast some of the time. We're at 41 now. Good to cut a Naki Ogre. Good cut Marauder's Axe. Marauder's Axe is not bad with all our flyers, though. It's good with like the instigator tokens. I guess maybe it's not fantastic too. Maybe we don't need it with something like Sure Strike. Yeah, maybe Axe actually gets the cut here. I could see cutting Ogre as well. Probably one of those two. We have three Enigma Drakes though, so I'm just kind of loath to cut any more spells if we can avoid it. Because that is where we're going to get our edge in the game, I think. So yeah, I guess Marauder's Axe. I think we're cutting Marauder's Axe. I think it's close, though. Okay, I think this is our 40, and I'll see you guys for match one. Back for match one here. Have a not great hand, but I think a playable hand. Enigma Drake, even if it's not going to be able to get on the beatdown for quite some time, it looks like, is still a 0-4 blocker. This is... A pretty good wall for 3 mana, and we do have some of our great top end, like Lathless Dragon Queen and the Horizon Scholar will both do great work if we get up to 6 mana. And Enigma Drake probably helps us get there. So let's go ahead and keep... I'm a little bit worried what this deck might look like if we get... Oop, sorry. Sorry about that, didn't realize I had my uh, Windows bar down there at the bottom. Hopefully that doesn't uh, 
cause too many problems, but looks like it's okay. All right, my opponent took a moment, decided to take a scry, and it scryed to the bottom here. So we'll put some fear into them by playing our mountain very first, even though we're not probably actually going to be <laughs> that aggressive of a start here. Kind of crazy we got three Enigma Drakes. It's not something that you see like three uncommons of in any draft pretty much very often. Okay, well, I'm starting off with an island, and I guess there's no real reason to play blue just yet. I guess our first double blue card is something like sleep, maybe if we want to anticipate, but I think we can wait till next turn. In which case, if we're playing red and we don't have a two drop, my opponent's thinking, yes, we got him. But fortunately for us, we're a little bit slower for, for red. I mean, obviously, we'd still rather have something like the Ishino Pyromancer or Goblin Instigator here. But if we don't, we don't. Okay, opponent showing off white blue with a Johnny's Pride Mate to open. Usually a card you're more likely to see in like a more heavy life gain deck, which is usually white black, but a Johnny's Pride Mate is still just gonna be like a 2-2 that has upside of being a 3-3 or a 4-4 on occasion. So I think you're pretty okay with Pride Mate, I think, in most decks. It just is a lot less good if you're not in a exactly white black. It's possible blue is my opponent's splash color. Maybe they threw us for a loop just like we were hoping to do to them. I do want to find action. I really don't care to find any more lands here. Hey, Pegasus Courser. Doesn't get past Enigma Drake especially well. Uh, they'll get in for one point of damage turn here. Okay, well, I guess if we're drawing a land, at least another island is better than the alternative. But we're just passing, though. Probably we'll play Horizon Scholar first and hope that Lathless uh, doesn't necessarily eat the first removal spell of my opponent's deck. If we'd hit a couple more early, like, big threats my opponent had to deal with, we might try and slam Lathless on six, but I think as it stands, it's pretty likely my opponent's got, like, Luminous Bonds, Religious Mastery, some sort of removal spell here. So if Primate really starts getting big, we have three outs to it. We have a Disperse... Uh, I'm not going to play around anything here. If my opponent wants to use the trick, I think that's actually okay. Uh, we have Disperse. We've got a Totally Lost and a Luminous Bonds. All of which can reset the Pride Mate at the very least. Oh man, do we bug? Looks like we bugged. Okay, we are past post bug. We found Electrify, which is actually a pretty great draw. I don't think I want to use any either of these threats though. I think we're just going to pass here and see if my opponent does something. We, I mean, we could like electrify the Pride Mate and get him for one with the Enigma Drake, but that's kind of whatever, given what our hand is, I think. I'd just much rather be able to shoot something big if my uh, opponent plays a nice like five drop here. The blocks. I guess we should end turn because we're not playing anything. Okay, opponent doesn't go for anything. Possible they have counter magic. Can't have bone to ash because it would require double blue here. I think we're just going to run out of the Horizon Scholar. This will be the biggest thing on the board by a considerable margin if it doesn't get countered. And if it does get countered, we're happy that Lathless didn't. Okay. Sure. And we'll just go ahead and pass. So next turn we could Gutter Snipe Electrify if we need to. Otherwise, we're probably just going to play Lathless and hope she sticks. Rise from the grave. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Well, one scrying two. They don't necessarily know we've got something great. Sky had one top and one bottom though. But if they have more removal, we might be in trouble in a hurry here. Let's go ahead and block like that. Hmm. So if we run out Lathless, she dies. We're in kind of a load of her, right? Eh, like it's not that bad. We're taking five damage down to twelve. I'm tempted to just electrify the Horizon Scholar with a Gutter Snipe in play, though, and then hope that maybe Gutter Snipe ends up being like a a lightning rod for more aggression for my opponent. Then we could play Siege Breaker Giant. I don't know. I'm not sure how much I should sandbag Lathless and how much I should just go for it. In this color combination, though, I feel like it's really likely that my opponent's gotten more removal. I think we'll just electrify, kill off the Ryzen Scrawler. And I think we're still just in pass mode. 
think the two life from the pride mate matters more than the or the two life will gain from my opponent not being able to gain with the pride mate matters more than the one damage we deal with Enigma Drake. Bog Stomper, huh? Alright, that's pretty big. Our Siege Breaker Giant actually might have to just trade with that, which is not fantastic, but... Let's go ahead and block. So I'll just take one. One has two cards remaining. We got a Disperse. Oh man, that would have been such a clean answer to Rise from the Grave. Oh well. If we'd drawn that a turn before, we would have been sick. Would have been sick. So we could disperse box dump or just go back to my opponent's hand, swing, bring my opponent down to 12 in that case, and play Siege Breaker Giant. And then actually Siege Breaker Giant can keep my opponent's box stomper from swinging next turn. Or from blocking, potentially. Actually, kind of guess. Might force my opponent to stop attacking at least for a turn. Alternatively, we do what? Because we only have the one interactive spell in hand, and we are just making like a mana play at that point. We're not getting any real long-lasting value out of it. Six damage is six damage. Uh, it might encourage my opponent to just like kill the Siege Breaker Giant. Kind of want to get Lathless down though. I don't know though. Hmm. I think this is actually pretty close. If we play Lathless, we're accepting six damage. But then next turn we get to hit for quite a bit, and we put my opponent in maybe a worse spot. Maybe we go for it here. Sure. Okay, and we'll just pass the turn back. So my opponent's got removal. We cry a little bit. If they don't have removal, we're happy. I think Lich's Caress is definitely not out of the possibility here. Okay, opponent plays an island. No removal. They have waited a minute, and if you've got removal, I think you usually go for it. So, hey, we gotta get in. Cool, just come with the Bog Stomper. Nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Go down to 10. And then, depending on what my opponent plays, we disperse something. Skeleton Archer. Okay, fair enough. Shoot in our face, I imagine. Sure. Okay, and a Snapping Drake. So we disperse Bog Stomper. We swing in with Lathless. Or we just play Siege Breaker Giant, keep up our Disperse, swing with Lathless. I guess that's not bad, right? Don't know why it doesn't want to give us blue up. There's Siege Breaker Giant. I guess we should do it after combat. Sorry about all the tapping untapping. Okay. Let's get in with our Dragon Queen. See, Enigma Drake's done a fair job of just like being a big blocker here, even though we haven't really gone off with it, quote unquote, this game. Okay, opponent goes to 12. Player Siege Breaker Giant. And we'll end our turn here. And I think we're just gonna have to be content to trade the Siege Breaker Giant for the Bog Stomper, because I want to have access to Disperse here. So Lathless on her own can do how much? So Disperse, Gutter Snipe goes down to 10. We have 1, 2, 7 mana, so Lathless can do 9. If we Disperse like Pegasus Course, should we go for Lethal if they don't have anything? Actually, that might just be a kill. Is that, this also goes up to 2, so that's 8 damage. And 10, probably enough. So in that case, it becomes we're trying not to die this turn and hoping my opponent doesn't have something that saves them for a small amount of life here. Did they go Pegasus Scorcher and Bog Stomper get in? That's kind of interesting. Okay. So let's just go ahead and disperse the Bog Stomper. And we should have lethal at that point. And my opponent can't have like random combat tricks that get us. Um, still no random combat trick for that combination that does enough damage. Okay, I guess we'll play our island just to be safe, but well, let's go ahead and go to attacks. And swing with both these. Fortunately, the drake is a drake, not a dragon, for maximum value, but... And we got him. Looks like we got him. Alright, Lathless managed to go the distance. Feels good, feels good. The only thing that would made that game better is if we could have used the Disperse on the Rise from the Grave. Oh, that would have been sweet. Okay, so my opponent's got, I guess, mostly a white-black deck. They're splashing for blue, and 
I got some flyers, maybe some life gain synergies, although we didn't see too much. Does anything seem bad for our deck? Pyromancer probably gets blank pretty fast, but we actually may need some blockers on the ground too, if we don't find like one of our Enigma Drakes or if it ends up biting the dust. Maybe we like Talaran Scholar better than Anaki Ogre. Although Ogre just trades up with like a Johnny's Pride Mate and stuff too. I think I'm just gonna keep this as is. Oh yeah, that's right. We can't sideboard anyway, I forget. We had our our bug that keeps us from doing it. So I'll see you guys in a second when our time runs down. Okay, another pretty reasonable hand here, I think. Let's go ahead and keep it. We've got our Meandering River, so we've got all of our colors. We're a little bit slow. My opponent's going to get to play up through turn three before we have anything that interacts on the board. But then we have two things and eventually our bomb, so don't think things can go too terribly. Again, I have to apologize for any construction you guys are picking up over the mic here. I'm hoping it's pretty quiet, but it's always hard to tell exactly what's going to be a problem and what isn't. All right, Fountain of Renewal. No Pride Mate, please. No Pride Mate. That is the nightmare scenario here. Okay, no Pride Mate. Great. And maybe even my opponent's stuck on lands? That'd be the ultimate combo? Okay, Child of Knight's good. My opponent's showing us the uh, the other half of the life gain deck here. We saw the payoffs earlier, but no actual cards to go uh, to, to set it up in the last match. It looks like they do have some here. But also not working off a mulligan this time around. Helps out quite a bit. Or, yeah, no, they're not because they're on the play and they played two cards. All right, well, we'll go down to 18. No questions asked. We're going to play Enigma Drake. Okay, I was hoping we didn't bug there. I kind of paused on my opponent's Child Knight for a long time, it felt like. Essence Scatter would have been really nice last turn, but a little bit too late now, unfortunately. We could play the Ogre and try and trade with this. It's a pretty bad trade for us, but hmm, yeah, no, I think getting the Enigma Drake out, and then we, if we like Essence Scatter next turn or something, that Enigma Drake all of a sudden is blocking the Child of Night just fine. We get the oh, the Child of Night lifelink trigger is nice for payoffs, so maybe our Ogre should just trade for the Child. Seems like such a bad trade though. Yeah, I think we'll be able to do better than that. So let's play our Enigma Drake. My opponent's got counter magic, it's a little bit awkward, but not the end of the world. Alright. And my opponent still gets to gain some life for the Child of Night, which is not irrelevant. My opponent's already up to 25. But if we get a stick of threat like Lathless, we can probably kill my opponent anyway. Yeah, no real reason not to attack. No real reason for us not to block. It does look like they're still missing out on white here. Alright. One gets in with Child of Night and nothing else. No other play, which is a little bit interesting. So we could keep up Essence Scatter and block what's probably like a reasonable five. And then Ogre next turn. Or we could play the Ogre and maybe start swinging back in. Ogre probably trades with what they're, whatever they're playing. So maybe that's okay. We can just be a little bit more proactive here. Should have played a Mountain there to show off my opponent a potential shock. Although, if we'd had it, we probably would have used it on the Child of Night. Not 100%, not but probably. Uh, no attacks. Well, hopefully there's no, like, a... What's that card? Sarah Ascendant? No. Angel... Angelic Destiny. Is that what it's called? Mm, I can't remember. There's some, like, modern card that... Oh, interesting. Unwilling to trade even here. Okay. Hmm, so we could... We could offer the trade. My opponent didn't want to, then. Get the Child Knight off the battlefield. What's going to ruin us on Child Knight that's already not really bad with Founder Renewal? All I can think of is the uh, Epicure. I guess making sure you get like a bat token a little bit later might be nice. I think I still would rather play Snapping Drake, though, even though keeping up Essence Scatter seems like it has potential here. I think we're still going to sit. My opponent doesn't want to attack. I think I'm okay not attacking. All right, we will pretend like we have shock this time around, but since there's, n I don't think there's anything actually that is white and blue in Meandering River. All right, well, Snapping Drake will very slowly start working my opponent's life total back down. Why are all these guys Drakes? You could be dragons. I believe in you. Laughless believes in you. That's true. I think that we had opportunity to take a dragon egg after Laughless. Was that the end of pack two? Which I also ignored. 
I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments on that one if that's the case. No play. All right, well, we're feeling fairly firmly in the driver's seat now. Is the ogre destined to trade? I still feel like that's just not good for us. Let's get in with the snapping drake and play our lathless. My opponent had counter magic. I'm sure they would have used it at this point. It's possible they do have removal, but if they don't, we're going to start running away at the game pretty quick. And it's nice to kind of prey on my opponent when they're light on lands here. At this point, I feel like if my opponent's got something, you use it. Like, you've either got it or you don't. Lathless is definitely worthy of murder if that's what they've got sitting in their hand. Could be maybe considering Cracking Fountain, which I probably would since they're stuck on lands, but... In their deck, it does seem like they really, really want the life gain, so maybe that's not correct. And they did find white now, so. So if they find, like, the uh, Regal Bloodlord, that's a problem for us. That's pretty good. Yeah, Johnny's Pride Mate, which we have a clean answer for in Luminous Bonds. Much less scary than our, uh... ooh, I like me a crash through. Couldn't use that right now. Draw ourselves a card. Okay. And make our Enigma Drake ever so slightly larger, which I don't think we're swinging with the Enigma Drake. I kind of want to just leave up our uh, Essence Scatter. We could Luminous Bonds the Pride Mate right now. Oh, that might encourage my opponent to crack the Fountain, which I'm not sure I actually want them to do. Do we want to play another land? I actually not sure we do. Maybe play around Mind Rot a little bit better. So let's go ahead and swing with Lathless and our Snapping Drake. Well, are we, we're not using Luminous Bonds, I guess, yet. Disperse. Uh, okay. Well, fair enough. In that case, I think we probably will just play the island and replay it. Let's get in with the Snapping Drake. I think it's unlikely they can make Pride Mate so big that we can't interact. They do buy some time there, but that's not a super efficient play. Okay. Pride Mate gets bigger. But again, I think it's unlikely that it gets too big for the Anaki Ogre to tangle with. Don't think I want to block with Lathless if we can avoid it, but we can. So on board we have 18 damage, is that right? No, 14 damage. Um, which means that we can try and set up for sleep the turn after this one. If we swing my opponent... Okay, they do have the Epicure Blood. Solid, solid. Yeah, I can't get in with Child. Okay. So we play our mountain now, and it gives us potentially an extra hit. I think we want to get rid of the pride mate, although maybe not. Like, that's a lot of life loss. Let's see. So what happens if we sleep right now? If we sleep right now, we swing for quite a bit, right? We go for 5, 11, 15, can keep up essence scatter. It's probably just good, right? We'll probably kill my opponent the turn after that. We have luminous bonds to handle an additional threat. Yeah, I think that's actually just cleanest. Let us sleep. Good night, good night. And I guess we'll play our mountain, because I'm going to buff Lathless once. Go to combat. Crack in. My opponent goes down pretty low. We have Essence Scatter to deal with a creature threat. The only way I can see this maybe going wrong is if my opponent's got a removal spell for Lathless. Like, if they have, like, Lich's Caress, then all of a sudden maybe we're not quite getting there. But as it stands, like, Essence Scatter will kill any creature, and if they somehow manage to sneak, like, two in, they have to both be, like, Flyers and Luminous Bonds still doing it. This feels pretty foolproof. Yeah, like Snapping Drake is just going to walk into an Essence Scatter, and that should do it. Alright, and that is enough. My opponent had some, like, like a pretty good deck it looked like, but they definitely suffered a little bit from some, some mana problems there and managed to pick up a pretty easy win. I'll see you guys for our match two. Okay, we are back for match two after a pretty solid victory in match one. And I got a mulligan this, I'm pretty sure. Basically never going to keep a, a no land hand. Ooh, this is rough. If we find one red source, it's fine. We have Devil Enigma Drake and Crash Through. I think we're going to keep. If we find red in the first couple of turns, it works out okay for us. I really do hate going to Spive. So let's go ahead and keep. 
Yeah, we're gonna put that guy on the bottom for sure. Come on, give me a mountain. Give me a mountain off the top. If we do hit mountain, this hand is like pretty solid. I think it's got some good defense. Eh, island's not great. And some power as well. Enigma Drake does a pretty good job of being kind of a late game potential finisher. And then early on, eh, just being a uh, fine blocker. Doom to center. Luminous Bonds is actually not terrible as draws go, but not as good as a mountain. We do have the ac our access to white to play it though, so if my opponent just plays something like medium sized here, I think we'll probably Luminous Bonds it to avoid taking damage, assuming we don't find red of course. Probably won't use it on Doom to center, since Green Blacks would not be surprised to see it be kind of a sacrifice themed deck, and if my opponent gets like Blood Divination on the center after we Luminous Bonds it, that's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough game if we do something like that. So we'll just pass here. Anaki Ogre was not a great draw. Eh, ugh. Yeah, Hired Blade having Flash actually is going to matter here a fair amount. They get to get in and do some nefarious things to our life total, which let them list, miss Luminous Bonds at least for a turn. All right, down to 15, Ravenous Harpy. Okay, Harpy's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh man, missed again. So I think we have to lose, use the Luminous Bonds here, and unfortunately I think we have to stick on the Harpy. We could put on, Lum on Hired Blade and just accept the fact the Harpy gets a little bit bigger. Eh, maybe that's not terrible. It does mean we're taking less damage, although only by one. And I think that the Harpy just has a lot more utility going forward. So let's go ahead and get the, get the Harpy under the Bonds here. We'll take another four down to 11 and continue to pray for mountains. I do think this was an okay hand. I mean, obviously a little bit speculative, but I think most of the time you're gonna do better than going to five here. Yeah, so even though it's not working out great for us this game, I think I stand by the decision. All right, yep. Well, we don't have to discard, so that's good at least. We're basically, we're just getting back the mulligan, right? All planned, all part of the plan. Okay. Jarvis Harpy is sacrifice another creature too. So they can't actually get it back ever if they have like a rise from the grave sort of effect. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to play a Enigma Drake here and hope to stem the bleeding a little bit. I would not be at all be surprised to see my opponent have a removal spell, but that's still our best play. Like, we can't play around really anything here. We play Ogre, I guess, and say, hey, I'll trade with Hired Blade, but... Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we're just taking one here. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have like Colossal Dreadmaw. Because we do not have another great answer for Colossal Dreadmaw. Okay, it doesn't look like a trick. Rock's Oracle is good, although I think worse than just like my opponent having a huge threat here. So I think we probably just need to play the Ogre here. I'm a little bit tempted to play like Sure Strike and Disperse. And if my opponent doesn't have anything, we get to like bounce a creature, kill something, and kind of stabilize on board. And then Enigma Drake's just kind of big from here on out. We played the Ogre and block. We're only taking one. It's not quite as bad if my opponent has removal, although we're going down to one, I guess, if my opponent has removal. So I guess maybe we can't play around it. And then Disperse plus Sure Strike maybe keeps us alive. Really wish we still another land, but. My opponent doesn't do anything this turn, then we're just wrecked, right? But there's no way they're not attacking. Guess we'll just pass. This has got to look kind of suspicious to him, but I think this is our best line. I don't know. You guys love to let me know. Maybe I should just play the ogre there. Duress. Oh, well, I guess maybe I should have just played it. Actually, yeah, that's true. I should have, like, hit the Enigma Drake and then kept up Disperse. Yeah, I should have played both in response. Uh, some bad play already. Don't think it's going to have mattering in this game, but... Okay. So let's go ahead and block our, our Rocks Oracle. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't play it there. Oh well. Play our Sure Strike. They got removal in response. Yeah, you got me. Although if they're going to do that, that doesn't actually do anything, right? Oh, maybe they'd forgotten the Enigma Trigger's gonna get a little bit bigger. Possible. Still a first striker. Okay. 
Wait. What? Free bug. Oh my goodness, it's happening constantly. Well, I guess we just get to have to accept that we don't ever get to, uh... <laughs> that we don't ever get to sideboard these days. Alright, so we've got a mountain. We could play Siege Breaker Giant. That doesn't seem fantastic compared to, like, Crash Through plus our Enigma Drake, though. So let's play Crash Through. I would be pretty sad if we didn't... Like, if we could have won this game if I dispersed and if we don't otherwise, but... Can't do too much about it now, other than weep at our misfortune. I guess our opponent repaid... Re paid the favor with that bad strangling spores but and i mean we need one more land and then we do have two very very good cards so it's possible we get to stay alive my opponent has like the the archer the the green black uh, death touch death what's it called death arrow something or other uh, yeah, uh block both of these guys Okay. My opponent's got the minus one, minus one to everything, like a skeleton archer to finish off one. That's possible. Yeah. Okay. Skeleton archer kills off the drake. Sure. This still blocks skeleton archer fairly well. We are going to have another follow up. My opponent has exactly another creature. We'd be in trouble. Okay, well. We cannot afford to not play Siege Breaker Giant next turn. So I guess we're pitching Ogre and Horizon Scholar. It's a little bit unfortunate because if we draw a land, we'd much, much rather have the Scholar, but I don't think we can take that risk, so. Okay, and we did indeed miss. I'm glad that I kept the Siege Breaker Giant. And sleep is another way we maybe mize out of victory. Be a lot happier if we were at five life here. Vigilant Valoth. It's a big one. Okay, no good attacks though. So, we can try and convince my opponent to attack and totally lost, I guess. Or just trade. Sure. Could play sleep. Let's see, if we sleep, we swing for 7. Actually, I guess 10. We swing for 10. Wow, are we going to be able to steal lethal, actually? If we sleep, we swing for 10. My opponent doesn't untap if they don't have anything. They lose if they have a creature, we totally lost it. What the heck? Sleep is such a stupid look good card. Yeah, I think we go for it. Man, if we win this game, we did not deserve to win this game. Sleep is so good. Like, I knew it was good, and it's just been better than I thought it was, like, every single game. All right. Man, if we win this game, that's just gonna be absurd. Oh my goodness. Oh, man, even with the Mist Disperse, didn't punish us. Okay, well, I don't know. Arena's been glitchy. I wonder if it's just me. I wonder if there's something weird with my install. Although, I don't know, I've tried reinstalling it. I don't know, maybe something with, like, my network settings? I don't know. Anyway, point being, we cannot sideboard here, so I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, we are back and unsideboarded, but this hand is pretty good. We've got to crash through into Enigma Drakes and totally lost. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's almost like there are three of these in the deck. Let's go ahead and keep. And Vampire Neonate. Yeah, at least all of our threats fly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all of them. Uh, let's crash through. Okay. Next turn we'll play a Pyromancer and have to face the music since we probably won't be able to get through the Neonate, but that's all right. Next turn after that, though, we've got Enigma Drake into Enigma Drake into Siege Breaker Giant into my opponent's dead. Let's hope. Okay. Oh my goodness. The Vampire Neonate's already better than the Pyromancer. <laughs> Mind Rot. Ooh, that's actually kind of interesting. I think I hit pitch one land and probably totally lost. Yeah. I mean, that actually does speed up our Enigma Drake offensive, too, which is not nothing. Okay, and that's good value for my opponent. Hmm. Okay, and we hit a land, so I actually maybe would have even been happier pitching another land, but... It is what it is. Swing at our Pyromancer. I'm pretty sure my opponent blocks every time here, but we'll get another chance not to. Alright, that's okay. 2-4 in the air. 
And that'll be followed up by another 2-4 in the air. Come on. Mind Rod again. Ugh. Well, I guess I'm just keeping Enigma Drakes. Kind of brutal, actually. Yeah. Okay, alright. Mind Rod's not deck. So let's go ahead and swing with both of these. Do I want to use Sure Strike to get through the Neonate? Um, or do I want to keep up the Sure Strike to maybe go through the Drake? I think I'll play the Drake this turn and maybe use Sure Strike the turn after Enigma Drake's in. Okay, well, Drake's Galore. Opponent's got some pretty good card advantage. We have a, a tempo lead, but not an insurmountable one. Double Mind Rot there was pretty punishing for our deck that wasn't uh, super, super fast on the draw. Oh, all right. Well, turns out that it doesn't actually end up mattering all that much. Ooh, Goblin Instigator. So I think we'll play that Overture Strike. I still want to get more value. I don't want to just get this for damage. I mean, we could go for nine here, and then my opponent goes down to eight. I guess oh, that's pretty aggressive. What if they don't have any flying blockers? It's nine damage going to eight. Takes six. They're dead in two turns. If we swing, they go down to 13. Next turn, we sure strike. So I guess it's still the same clock one way or the other, right? 13... Nine, six. Okay, so I guess we'll play the Goblin Instigator in that case. And swing with our both of our Drakes. Vampire and Neonate, I guess, actually... I don't think it actually changes the math there. Especially if my opponent keeps playing stuff. And if they don't play stuff, we get to get in for extra damage with our Goblins, so... Rock's Oracle. Good card. Hopefully the card advantage is not going to be the determining factor in this game, because if it is, we're in trouble. I want to get in with Skeleton Archer. Okay. Don't hate that. Don't hate that. Ooh. Well, Rise and Skeleton would be good if we had some lands. <laughs> okay, so we swing this turn. Let's see. We swing this turn. We swing with both. My opponent blocks Rocks Oracle, blocks the innate. We use Sure Strike, kill off like Oracle. My opponent takes six. And then Enigma Drake's turn, not lethal next turn. But my opponent doesn't have a Rock's Oracle. Alternatively, we Enigma Drake, my opponent. Opponent goes down to seven. No, goes down to nine, which means we have to Sure Strike this turn. So I guess the question is, are we Sure Striking for damage or are we Sure Striking for instigators? If my opponent's unlikely in this color combination to... Well, if they have like a giant spider, though, we get destroyed. I think I kind of want to kill the Rock's Oracle and go for a slightly slower game. So we swing with everything. Be okay. sure strike on this instigator. Kill off the Rock's Oracle. You can make an argument to kill the Neonate as well, I think, but... Okay. So, we don't have lethal, but... Oh, my, that's enough for my opponent. Okay, cool. <laughs> we worked our way through the double mind rot. And won that absurdly stupid first game off sleep. Man, sleep's a good card. You heard that? See you guys for match three. All right, back for match three. This hand is unexciting, but I think keepable. If our one Inaki Ogre bites the dust, it's a little bit awkward with two sure strikes. But this hand is like one Enigma Drake away from being fairly good. We have our mana. I think that I'm okay keeping this. There are definitely draws that could lead to this hand being pretty bad, but I, I think I like our chances. All right, let's start off with Stone Quarry for sure. And let's see what my opponent's up to over there. Swamp. All right. Totally lost, not a fantastic draw, but it is a draw. I guess... Excuse the motorcycle outside. There's not a real... Yeah. Doom Dissenter. Okay, so blue-black with Doom Dissenter means probably more like control deck. And Meandering River. Well, we're not going to play that just yet. I'm just going to get the Sanaki Ogre out. We do have, I guess, Sleep as our single Devil Blue card, so I don't think we need to show my opponent off that we have an island just yet. We could go, like, Anticipate into wanting something else, though. Maybe it's not that big of a deal to not show my opponent a color. Yeah. I don't know. 
I, I'm always definitely in the camp of playing your playing your lands fairly aggressively, just because it feels so bad if my opponent like mind rots and we want to get rid of a mountain or something like that. Like we're much much happier having an island in play if my opponent plays mind rot right there, for instance. Okay, no additional plays. Lathless is pretty good. Let's go ahead and swing with our Anaki Ogre. We'll let my opponent upgrade. Probably won't be able to do anything else with their turn though, which is not the worst. It's possible they're holding up like counter magic or something here. Yeah, I'm okay with this trade, my opponent's okay with this trade. Alright, you got a 2-2. Two -two. Usually gonna have to crack the Doom Descender sooner or later anyway. And we, if my opponent taps out, we could use like Sure Strike to get through and get another spell into our graveyard. Or next turn we could also Totally Lost, I guess. It's not fantastic use of Totally Lost. The bounce effect is... Ooh, anticipate. Fair enough. This kind of turns Totally Lost into a really, really expensive Disperse if we're using on a token, but sometimes it's still good as a really expensive Disperse. Opponent has no play on turn 4. I... Don't really want to run Sure Strike in on the zombie. Hmm. So I could just totally lost and swing for four. The problem is with Sure Strike, if my opponent does have some sort of instant speed interaction, like they've got the minus three, minus three, it's just such a blowout. I think I'm gonna use Totally Lost and we'll try and follow it up with Lathless next turn. This is maybe a little bit aggressive with our removal, but it potentially forces some damage, maybe gets my opponent to use a kill spell. Okay. And maybe we get a little bit better idea of what my opponent's up to. They could have the 3-2 flash. Well, I think you'd use it. Yeah, like getting my opponent to use murder there is fantastic for me. Because I really, really want to try and stick this Lathless if at all possible. And if my opponent had something like the Spores, I think they would use it there. It's still possible we'd run to Lich's Caress. Also, my opponent has counter magic. We could sandbag Lathless and just sit on our hands. My opponent has Bone to Ash. We're just destroyed. It's possible they wouldn't have countered the Ogre a couple of turns ago, even if they'd had it. Or Essence Scatter, I mean, I don't think they could have played Bone Dash at that faithful turn. If we stick Lathless, we're in a really, really good spot to win the game. If we miss on Lathless, things are pretty dire, especially if they have, like, Bone Dash. I never know when I'm supposed to, like, stick this sort of a thing, because if my opponent's got counter magic, we just feel so bad. I think the fact they use Murder... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. That was a lot of talking to go for it, but they didn't have counter magic at least. If they have more premier removal. We weren't probably going to play around that anyway. Hopefully, my opponent can't use this uh, use their mana effectively here, and we just get to get them. I'm actually. I think it's. I don't know. Okay, totally lost. Fair enough. So we removed counter spell from my opponent. If they had removal, they probably would use it. You have like Lich's Crest, maybe you deny a draw for a turn, and just count on the fact that we're probably replaying that next turn. Okay, oh man, getting back murder. Alright, alright, alright. I see the game. So do we play Lathless and just force my opponent to use murder? It's not really fantastic for us, we don't have any great way to buy it back. But on the other hand, I'm not really sure we're going to sneak it through otherwise. We don't have any like dragons that we could try to play to get immediate value. I mean, we could try and find something like Siegebreaker Giant, but that's assuming we draw that. And even then, my opponent still knows about Lathless, so if they have any other way to interact, I think they'll go for it. And I think we have to play it. Feels bad, though. Feels bad. Okay, so they probably murder. They don't kill it immediately. We draw like Disperse or something. That might be pretty good, but... Pretty sure if I'm my opponent, I just want to get this off the battlefield right now. Okay, well, did not go for it. We could not attack. Let's see if my opponent wants to force a murder. Well, no, we want to force my opponent to use it. We don't want to give them the choice. Because if they do have something else they could play if we're not attacking, maybe that's more efficient. Murder's going to come down here, and it'll be sad for us, but that's okay. Resolves. Stupid Salvager of Secrets. This card is funny because in some decks it's pretty mediocre and in some decks it's great. Like, this let them get back a murder, best removal spell in the set, probably in like, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly where it rates overall, but it's pretty high. Okay, well Disperse still is a great draw for us. 
but otherwise Lapless might kill us in pretty short order with our two Church Strikes rotting in our hand right now. We find an Enigma Drake. We're close to being able to use Church Strikes to get out of it. Okay, Pyromancer at the very least does block the Salvager, which is not all bad. Good and pass. We've used our Totally Lost, so we can't use that for Lathless. Yeah, I think that realistically Disperse is our only answer. <sighs> zombie Dragon, or Dragon Zombie, excuse me. So I think we're just blocking. Still not going to use Sure Strike, I don't think. No. Um, they're just going to come back again. Oh man, it's disgusting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, we may, we may have to be looking for game two here, because this has been a pretty sound thrashing already. Yeah, I'm going to get back another murder, and I feel like that's... Oh, wow. Getting back normal endurance. Interesting. I guess they're maybe assuming that the only way they lose is if we can kill Lathless somehow. Yeah, that draw is not going to do it. Do we want to sign back two at this point? If we find an... Anticipate we want to be able to play something like Horizon Scholar, maybe. So, nah. Alright, let's pass. Yeah, these two Sure Strikes have looked just terribly, terribly bad here. I think they're good cards in the deck, but... Kind of like Trumpet Blast, like having too many of them in the, the wrong hand is pretty bad. Okay, so we get on to 8, and we get... Or, sorry, to 4, we take 8. We get one more shot to try and remove Lathless. All right, and that misses. I will say good game here. And let's try again after sideboard. What do we want as a sideboard against this deck? Slower, more controlling for sure. You try and go underneath with Goblin Motivator, but I'm not sure that this deck realistically can win that sort of a game. Marauder's Axe may be good. It can turn some of our crappier threats like the obvious, uh, you know, Pyromancer or Goblin Instigator into legit stuff. Could also try like splashing for Knightly Valor or for Make a Stand. Anything seem bad in our deck? Kinda don't hate anything. First Strike obviously looked pretty bad there, but I don't think it's usually gonna be quite that bad. Do we want the axe? I feel like we just don't have that many creatures is the problem. And it's pretty good if we get like a bad creature early, but if we find something like Enigma Drake or Snapping Drake, I guess Mars Axe is still okay then. I still think we might just want more creatures for things like Sure Strike. Although. Maybe Marauder's Axe. Well, this is an instant, too. Okay, we're, we're gonna keep the same, I think. Lots of talking, no change. You guys are used to that for me. <laughs> okay. A fine, not exceptional hand. Let's go ahead and keep. That's true, that was our real problem the last game. We didn't have a, our Enigma Drake in our opening. Mr. Drake. Okay. I guess we should always start with Mountain there. Give my opponent the fear of shock, although I don't think it's likely to change their play here. I'm very near name. Ooh, crash through. I will use a crash through for sure. Making our Enigma Drake ever more powerful. No play for my opponent yet. Electrify's a good one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think we're running it out. Hoping we get to, to dodge murders. Sure. You got me. What a creepy guy. Can you imagine this guy like sitting right behind you and just slowly sucking your blood? Because that's what's happening, right? I guess maybe it's a terrifying vampire to regular old folks, but to us fancy planeswalkers, we're too OB. So we could sure strike and go for it. My opponent can't have murder here, but they, they didn't show us dispersed. They did show us a totally lost. I think I'm just gonna keep up Electrify though. Let's swing in for one with our Drake. Try and keep pace with this Neonate. Could shoot the Neonate. I think Electrify will find better targets though. The one drain is significant, but it's also expensive for my opponent. It's not free to use. So they've got double black and have snapping Drake. I'm much happier to Electrify that. Yeah, I do think I want. There was a moment of pause there because I was like, maybe I should try and get the sure strike, but I don't think they'd block. Okay, we're only one land away from Horizon Scholar. That's pretty nice. And Her Enigma Drake is now keeping up with my opponent's Neonade. Look at this. Bomb uncommon over here. 
I procure blood. Sure. It's a pretty reasonable card. Do we want to disperse it? Does buy my opponent or buy us some time? Because they're going to be able to crack next turn. I want to be able to play Horizon Scholar if I can. I actually think I like that. It gets in for a little bit of extra damage, too. It is card disadvantage, but I think it's a good tempo play. Keeps my opponent off our back with the Neonate as well. Okay. Ooh, Anticipate. Not quite as good as a Horizon Scholar, but this is turning our Enigma Drake into a legitimate threat here. <laughs> okay. Well, at least we got some more lands on the bottom, right? Oh, I should have grabbed red there. I'm not sure exactly what I was thinking. That's okay. Get in with our Drake. So we could get in for as much as 8 here, but I think I still would rather have a Sure Strike later on, probably. So if they're just going to play like Epicure again, then we get to hit for another 4, and then Horizon Scholar starts getting there in a pretty real way. My opponent has exactly Murder and Drain. Eh, that's not even not that terrible. Snapping Drake? Sure. Kind of interesting. I don't think they'll want to block. Okay. So we swing with our Drake. Guess on the off chance they have some sort of shenanigans. Doesn't seem real likely to me. Stone Quarry wasn't a bad draw because it unlocks our Luminous Bonds in hand. Play Horizon Scholar. Do we want Essence Scatter? I don't think that this deck actually necessarily. Well, Essence Scatter's still not bad, right? It's another answer card. What are we hoping to find that's better? Lathless, totally lost. Probably not much, actually. Alright, so let's keep Essence Scatter. Let's put our island on the bottom. One to the top, one to the bottom. Not an uncommon scry. So now we have Luminous Bonds plus Sure Strike this next turn. My opponent realist. Okay, that's pretty good. Still using up a lot of their mana. We're gonna hit pretty hard here and still have Essence Scatter up. Okay, let's attack with everything. Hopefully take my opponent down to close to nothing. They have the plus two plus oh, that's a little bit awkward. Yeah, it looks like well, that's what they've got. Oh man, sure strike would have been fantastic there. Maybe we don't play Stone Quarry. Okay, that's good. Horizon Scholar is still a two turn clock. It's possible they can't answer that, but. Okay. You got yourself Snapping Drake. Ugh. Yeah, normal endurance. Doing some real good work in this matchup. Mind Draw was pretty good there, too. It's funny, because if we hit any other land other than Stone Quarry, there's a reasonable chance we'd hold on to it. Alright, well. We have now lost most of the good cards, like our, our best top end cards in the deck. My opponent's still at 7. It's possible something like Gutter Snipe still gets us there. Really lost is not worst. I guess we don't play it right, right yet. Okay, so they bring in Epicure and we'll Essence Scatter it, I imagine. We were so close. Things could have been so good. Okay. Do we want to take it from this? No. I think we bounce it. Put that guy on top. Have Essence Scatter for whatever my opponent follows up with here. Probably the... Yeah, I don't know. Epicure seems like a reasonable play for my opponent. On the other hand, like, one Enigma Drake's not getting... <laughs> like, it's trying to get close to lethal, I guess. Like, we have a lot of spells in our graveyard. Alright, we're just gonna hold that. Okay. Let's see if we can't find something a little bit better. Meandering River. That's not much better, is it? Uh, I guess Lathless has some utility. I guess we keeping one land in hands may be nice, but I'm not sure if we need to keep two. Yeah. I mean, we've drawn Anticipate. We've already played Crash Through, I believe, as well, right? Yeah. So really, it's just for Lathless and Siegebreaker Giant, I guess. Yeah, we're going to play our land, regardless. All right. Doing full control to maybe show my opponent that we could have something here. But maybe being a little bit obvious about it as well. Oh, two Neonates. The ultimate drain party. Alright, we'll end turn now. Yeah, I think this is 
Probably a lost cause. That mind rot was painful. Ugh, and we've just drawn kind of a lot of lands. Alright. So we go down to 10, then we go down to 5. Problem is Vampire Neonate's getting close to just killing us on its own, even without, like, even if we find, like, a block for Snapping Drake. Lathless still maybe gets it if we draw, like, Lathless into... Removal? <laughs> sure strike how you taunt me. Alright, well, we are dead here. We'll let my opponent play it out if, on the off chance they don't drain us, but we are dead. Darn, darn. Good first two matches. This last one was pretty uninspiring, though. Got pretty well controlled, pretty well handled by the blue-black deck, and... Hmm. I don't know, I really feel like you do play the stone quarry there. Alright, good game, good game. Yeah, sure strike. Definitely a liability in those games. Maybe we don't want to, maybe that was just bad. Oh well, see you guys for match four. Alright, back and refresh for match four. This hand looks quite good, we've got crash through, and then anticipate into Enigma Drake, eventually into a bomb. Yeah, hand looks great, let's go ahead and keep. Hopefully uh, this match goes a little bit better than the last one did. I'm feeling a little bit disheartened. That was kind of a tough, tough loss. I feel like, I don't know, you guys are probably going to catch something I didn't, but it feels like we didn't really misplay all that much. There just weren't very many good lines. Like, I feel like I took kind of one line that was required, and one line that was required, and one line that was required, and eventually we just kind of lost. Which is never super, super fun. All right. Plan on anticipating on my opponent's end step here. And I guess there's some argument to waiting for gutter snipe. How good is that argument? I think... No, I'm pretty sure I'm okay just getting a card into the graveyard for Enigma Drake and maybe trying to get that, that trainer rolling. Ooh, and this is a tough draw. Those are both really good cards. I think early on I'm leaning towards Electrify, but Sleep's really powerful. Hmm. I think Electrify, though. I can actually see Sleep being correct, though. It depends a little bit on how proactive my opponent is. Like, if I pull pretty quickly ahead over the next couple of turns, we'd rather have a Sleep. But if my opponent plays, like, a good reasonable sized threat here, maybe Electrify is more important. My opponent's on the Aura deck, so it's possible the Electrify won't really effectively answer a lot of stuff anyway. But if they play, like, a Master of Horns or, or Sater Enchanter, we really want to kill that. Yeah, no blocks, that's fine. Ouch. And I think on this turn, we're just going for Electrify. We could disperse the Enchanter and play Goblin Instigator? Nah, I think we're just going to play the bigger spell. The one advantage of that is... Yeah, I guess either way, we're using up red effectively. So this is when you cast an enchantment, so I think I'm just going to do it right now. Don't really want to risk my opponent getting a free card off of this. I'll just trade one for one and get in for an extra point of damage. Oh yeah, look at us, winning the race. And our Enigma Drake's only gonna get bigger. They look like Rabbit Bite, they still have like a clean answer here, but... And obviously we start losing the race in a hurry if my opponent auras these up. Although, Knight's Pledge doesn't do it on its own. Ooh, Colossal Majesty. Okay, we're gonna have to disperse away the Daggerback Basilisk this next turn, I think. So I'd really like to draw a land so we can Gutter Snipe as well. That'd be pretty sweet. Okay, well, missed, but that's okay. Play our Goblin Instigator, disperse the Basilisk, keep my opponent from drawing for a turn. Get rid of the Knight's Pledge. And then my opponent's down to only three cards in hand, and we've got a pretty big Enigma Drake's pounding in. Snapping Drake might be able to follow up next turn. Gutter Snipe's not looking like it's going to get a whole lot of advantage this game. We've played all of our spells, but... Who knows, it might be able to snap through those last couple points of damage if we needed to, too. Oh, it says nice. I don't know what that means. Nice, because we got rid of the Knight's Pledge? Maybe. If all they're playing again is Basilisk. And a Falcon. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they might kind of be out of gas. If they can't activate Colossal Majesty, we're in a good spot. If they can, things get scarier. But if they can't... Ooh, yes. So opponent just missing on it. And I guess we're going to play Snapping Drake here. It doesn't utilize our red, unfortunately, but it does use up all of our mana. I think that's probably as good or better. Let's get in with our Enigma Drake. I think if 
find my opponent, I just take this. Yeah. They can be scared for their life at a later point. My opponent finds another aura, they can start drawing off Colossal Majesty. Ooh, Johnny's Welcome is kind of tragic at this point. I don't think this card is very good often. Yeah, I don't think you want to right away the Rustwing Falcon for nothing. I can see it being powerful in some decks, but obviously it's showing how poor it is when you draw it late here. Okay, so can't play the Siegebreaker Giant. I think I like Gutter Snipe over the Ogre. Well, Gutter Snipe potentially gets a little bit better reach. Let's swing with both of these. My opponent doesn't chump block, we'll probably play Gutter Snipe. That just gives us such a better chance of just winning on the spot. Although, actually we probably should have gone with the Instigator, shouldn't we? We take my opponent to one in that case. I guess my opponent didn't block, but I actually kind of want to entice them not to double block this or use the blocker up. Um, Ogre is another lethal threat, but Gutter Snipe is lethal attacking on, on its own, my opponent too. My opponent might gain a life here. Yeah, I think we probably got him though. Getting rid of that, that one Knight's Pledge and the Seder Enchanter was pretty solid. Yeah, I think I'm glad I took Electrify over Sleep in this game. I'm not sure that'll always be the case, but I think this time worked out well. Alright, so medium-sized Flyers and Death Touch creatures are pretty good against Wall of Mist. Got Motivators doesn't seem great, and yeah, I still don't think I'm sideboarding anything. Alright, onward. Ooh. Opponent's going first. We draw an island. This hand gets pretty good pretty fast. We do have to draw an island. Eight blue sources in the deck. Three draws to do it. I guess we have about a one-third chance three times around, more or less. Two. I feel like this hand's good enough that it's really pretty poor to toss it back. But this hand could just do nothing, too, and that's always a scary thought. We have Crash Through, which is another fine draw. If we find something like Gutter Sniper Ogre, that's not terrible, or even Pyromancer. I am keeping. The sand is not great. Point Mulligan down to six. They may be smarter than we are. I guess you can maybe make the argument that Lathless is kind of close to a Mulligan, since it's very unlikely we'll play it this game. Maybe, maybe very unlikely is a strong word, but not. Okay, nice. All of our prayers have been answered. Rustwing Falcon. Alright, they got the Knight's Pledge. They are off to the races. So, as it stands right now, Enigma Drake still blocks this, which is nice. And actually, Sure Strike lets us fight our way through. Ooh, Gutter Snipe's not bad. We are going to take a not, not zero amount of damage here, though. Hopefully my opponent can't continue auroring it up. Oh, we have Wall of Vines. I do not care about Wall of Vines in this deck, I don't think. That's pretty good for us. Opponent already took the mulligan, and losing an extra card out of their hand is a cost for sure. Yeah, we're gonna play the Drake here. We're gonna try and block the Falcon. My opponent missed on their third land drop. And playing Wall of Vines is kind of anemic, so it's possible that's all they really have. Ugh, alright. Okay. So now what's the spot we're in? Definitely can't block with Enigma Drake, so we go down to nine. Two Enigma Drakes, we double block, we sure strike, we get in for five, it's just not quite enough unless we find a spell too. All the same, I think playing the Drake's still going to be better than going for Gutter Snipe here. We need to try and defend our life total. What can we find? I mean, Crash Through I guess is the dream draw, right? Anticipate's probably good enough since we probably would find another land. Uh, we may just die to Rustwing Falcon with the double <laughs> gift of knights, though. Feels a little bit cheatsy. I mean, you go in, you pledge to be like a knight, you get your pay once, and then all of a sudden you go back in again. And it's like, oh yeah, I was never here. Spurs like got like a mustache on or something. I don't know. Double dig, double dipping on the taxpayer's dime. Okay, so my opponent can get in for two. I, I mean, I guess we're playing Gutter Snipe here. This is a tough spot. We did keep a two-lander. We did find Island immediately. It gave us hope, but things are looking grim. Let's see. So if we 
say we block. If we get Sure Strike into the grave, that's an extra one point. That's not going to matter if we have Snapping Drake next turn, right? All right. If they play Gutter Snap, we're going to double block with Drake. So if they have a trick, it's it's over on every possible level here. But And this is this is exactly what the Ors deck wants to do. Sometimes they're just going to get the chance to do this to us. Maybe, well, no, I don't know. Okay, Johnny's last stand. Extra insult to injury. Sure. Okay, let's go block and block. Rest in peace, sweet Enigma Drake. So we're still at three, which means even if we have to chump block with the other Drake next turn, we're not dead. Yeah, we are chump blocking, but we have a stone quarry, I guess. I guess we're playing Pyromancer at this point. Essence Scatter. Do we need to keep up Essence Scatter for some reason? If my opponent resolves anything, it's bad. Yeah, I don't know what they have, though. I think on the off chance we do find a way to answer this Rustwing Falcon. Which is not, like, impossible. Maybe we should have swung with a Gutter Snipe. And, no, because we don't want my opponent to get a last stand token. Also Majesty. Sure. So we're pretty much on Disperser Bust here. I guess if we find a blue source, we can sleep and wait a little bit but we are definitely getting abyssed by these falcons now down to one sure strike <laughs> these double sure strikes have not been doing me favors maybe having two in this deck is just too much uh that is it for this game though, i believe so let's try for game three man Lost on the multi six when they played a wall of vines. Ultimate shame. Ultimate shame. I really don't know what we want more though. I mean, axe, I guess. The upside of it being a spell is just kind of high though. Catalyst elemental. Like this is just super mediocre. None of this seems great. I guess we could bring in like a motivator, but most of our like enigma drake, gutter snipe. These are just not good attackers on turn like three when they come down. Yeah, I think I'm just going to run it back. Alright. Hopefully this is not the end of our series. Ooh, well, I have to toss this one back, unfortunately. Just not enough lands. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, Mulligan. You know you want to. Yeah. Yeah, we have a scry. I'm going to keep. Again, there's another hand that needs to find blue pretty desperately, but we did, so... We get to go two, three, four in a not small amount of games. Okay. Oh, actually, uh, I need to get better about that. Once in a while, I miss my punt scries top or bottom, and I did not see there. Okay, wall of vines. That works pretty well against our pyromancer. Get in for two, but probably not much more. On the other hand, if we draw something like one of our many sure strikes, we maybe can. Get the Pyromancer through. No play. <laughs> well, uh, I thought may not have any interaction, but I think I still just want to make the mana efficient playing at the Enigma Drake in the air. No attacks. I could have attacked there, but my opponent is always going to block. I think it's possible they have a trick they want to use. Okay, Sainter Enchanter is bad. Ooh, snap. Essence Scatter might have been nice a turn before. Okay. Let's go to attack with both of these. We're going to use Sure Strike to get through the Wall of Vines. And make our Enigma Drake a little bit bigger. Pretty telling that we've got a trick here. But yeah, I think you still just always block. All right, Sure Strike. Well, both me and my opponents have not had like exceptional draws here. My opponent doesn't have an aura, or maybe in business. They do have pretty much any aura. They make the enchanter pretty big. Then all of a sudden we're looking pretty bad as they draw a card. Yeah. Still have Essence Scatter, which we can cast next turn if we don't find anything. Snapping Drake plus Enigma Drake might still hit my opponent hard and fast enough. Okay, well, Stone Quarry is a land eventually. Go ahead and swing with both, since I'm not blocking, I don't think. Well, actually, maybe we would. My opponent may not have... Well, are we better off trading damage? We might be. We are going to Essence Scatter this. 
Hmm. We're happy training three for three. I think we might be, given that my opponent's got an active enchanter. Opponent's happy to trade too. And another snapping drag. Okay, so let's go for four damage. We're just gonna try and win a race, I guess that's looking like here. Hmm. Now even if my opponent starts blanking the Pyromancer, we do. I mean, we're hitting for five a turn, and we have another Snapping Drake next turn. Are we just going to be able to outrun my opponent? Fossil Majesty. Pretty bad here. Oh, they do get a draw card. That's true. That makes the Majesty better. They don't have a follow-up here, though. It's possible they can't even attack with the Enchanter. Like, if we have another Sure Strike, they're dead. Okay. Uh, Satyr's Enchanter's getting big here. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, we're not blocking. Ouch. Nine. We're gonna draw an extra card next turn. So we go for the hit with both of these two, and then we play Snapping Drake, and then my opponent has to remove two threats. We have Viachino Pyromancer. Wait, or I guess we can leave Enigma Drake back. If we leave the Enigma Drake back, that gives us four additional toughness. My opponent would really have to go off with Seder Enchanter, I think. Or have two removal spells, which is probably not real likely. Okay, so let's swing with these two, take my opponent to five. Play another Snapping Drake. Hopefully we've just got an, an insurmountable amount of damage for my opponent to deal with next turn. The yeah, need two removal spells realistically, or like a removal spell and a big pump spell, something like that. It did draw twice. Opponent calls out good game. Did we get the did we get the concede? Knight's Pledge. Alright. That's big. Through to the cow. So if they have a rabid bite, we lose. Let's see. So we blocked that. That saves us from potential trick. We play rabid bite or we play rounded trick. Probably more likely to have good removal. I think we take it. Oh man, if they have a plus two, plus two, we feel so bad. Hmm. Does my opponent have removal or not? Would they have used removal previously? Last turn instead of colossal mastery, maybe. Well. Instead of Drew to the Cow, maybe. Why would you play Drew to the Cow pre-combat? I think I'm gonna block. Ugh, this is painful. Yeah, opponent, not looking like they've got anything. Good. All right. Oh, whew, man. All right. Ooh, that was a tight one. Happy to pick up the victory, but that was scary. That was awfully scary. See you guys for match, what is it now, five? I think it's match five. All right, we are back for match five. It is match five, I checked. Uh, his hands is fine, it's kind of land heavy, but we have Anticipate hopefully to help filter us to at least one more spell. Because you know, Pyromancer's not a bad two drop. I think I'm gonna keep, this hand could flood. I don't think it's worth going to six over that though. Opponent has Mulligan down to six, so. And it's gone to the bottom. And starting off with an island. Oh. Kindred Spirit. Okay. We are going to start off with our Pyromancer. And then Anticipate thereafter. Hopefully draw like Anticipate even in the middle. Ooh! Are we also playing the blue-red matchup? That would be pretty sweet. That'd be a sweet twist. Oh yeah, check us out. I think cr this blue-red's the only deck you're really happy to play Crash through in. So I'm willing to bet there's some Enigma Drakes going on over there. Divination. Okay. Making up for the Mulligan. And we've drawn quite well here. Okay, so I'm not going to anticipate till the end of my opponent's turn, but let's just swing with our Pyromancer. And I guess plan on Snapping Drake next turn. And then we have like Sleep or Totally Lost. It's funny, we've hit basically all blue cards, and we have a lot of blue cards in hand. <laughs> like we've got one mountain, admittedly, but mostly islands. Enigma Drake. Alright. We will anticipate. Is that's gonna be like reasonably sized now? I definitely don't want the lands, so let's take S and Scatter. We do have a couple of double red cards in the deck, but I'd rather not draw lands. Okay, so that's a 3 2 at this point. Or sorry, a 3 4 at this point. We have Snapping Drake, which is a 3 2. We could swing with a Biachino Pyromancer and try and bluff, but I think that's pretty dangerous. I think if I'm my opponent and I have like any other reasonable threat in hand, I'd just block there. We play Snapping Drake, we're at least trading back and forth. And then next turn we could Ogre plus Essence Scatter up. Seems not bad. 
No attacks. Okay. Hey, we've got some Enigma Drakes of our own. Come on, come on. Give them to us. One swing. Indicates they probably have a follow-up. Not gonna block, certainly. That might... Well, no, if they had removal, they'd kill Snapping Drake beforehand if that was the plan. Oh, okay. Salvager getting back Divination, probably? Yes. Okay, getting back Divination. Okay, there is Lathless. That's one of our uh, double-colored cards. So, not on Team Sleep quite yet. Let's go ahead and attack with both of these guys. Okay. Opponent trading away, and I'm not super unhappy about that, because I'm going to get the Ogre online. So we have Essence Scatter to answer something this next turn, and then we can maybe try and go for Sleep next turn. My opponent Divinates. Okay, sure. Go for Sleep, that's quite a bit of damage. Okay. Yeah, a lot of crash throughs. I definitely would have used more had we gotten them in this deck. My opponent's accepting a pretty big hit if they come in with the Drake, though. Okay, they do not. So we could just totally lost it on top of my opponent's library. They redraw it. We swing for seven. Then maybe we sleep next turn. They don't have removal at that point. They do have removal. They replay Enigma Drake. They have to have like shock, although shock does answer. Replay Enigma Drake, shock something. My opponent is down to six. They go down to three. If we sleep. Enigma Drake plus Essence Scatter. We could just sit on our hands and wait. We could swing with Anaki Ogre. My opponent probably doesn't want to block that. They do. Is that the worst? We play Enigma Drake. It'll be a two power creature because we're almost certainly going to get to Essence Scatter. I kind of like to swing with the Ogre, honestly. I'm playing the Drake and keeping up Essence Scatter. So I'd be surprised, yeah, to see my opponent go for this. We're still taking him down to nine, which is still a hit. I think we're very likely to be able to kill him off of sleep. They would have to play removal this turn, and I mean, as long as your opponent isn't aware of sleep already, it's kind of a hard thing to play around, because it looks like you're fine and then you are just dead. Removing all the blockers for two turns is pretty rough. Ooh, no play at all. Well, okay, that actually might mean removal then. One Hitching Aviation Pioneer. Yeah. So we could... Probably removal. If they have a trick, what's the trick here that gets us? No, nah, it's just gotta be like something like Electrify that you think they have to play. In which case, they're shooting Anaki Ogre. If we use Totally Lost, get rid of the Drake, we swing in for five. We can't keep up Essence Scatter then, so maybe we play Sleep. Tap down Enigma Drake, they kill the Ogre, we get in for five. We still have Totally Lost and Essence Scatter available. That seems better to me. They had two removal spells, they have like Double Shock. That'd be Shocking. <laughs> um, yeah, let's just sleep here. I think this is our, our best scariest line for our opponent. If they don't have anything, they're dead, but they have something or they would have played like Pioneer. I don't think there's any instant stuff, like instant creatures. It's got to be just like Electrify, right? Unless they were really banking on this Enigma Drake. Why wouldn't they play something then? Yeah, it's gotta be like Electrify. They're maybe just choosing which thing's scariest. Okay. Fine. Okay. And we will pass until my opponent plays something. Do we care about that? I guess we do. Yeah. We could wait and totally lost the token. But we can probably do that to anything else they play to. So let's just Essence Scatter here. It's mana efficient. I like being mana efficient. In case there's something else that we've missed. Okay, Sure Strike almost certainly seals the deal here. Let's go ahead and go to attacks. They have Shock. They maybe could stay alive against Snapping Drake. Oh, Uncomfortable Chill. Okay, so that means they're only taking one. And... Two, but then Sure Strike kills them, right? Because this is three, six, seven damage, five. Yeah, okay. That should still be enough. Nice. Okay, close game. My opponent's got a whole lot of crash throughs. I am jealous of that. They probably don't have three Enigma Drakes, though. Enigma Drake is a nice one. Uh, man. <laughs> every time I look at our sideboard, and every time I decide that our sideboard's bad, I guess let's just go back into the game.
a unfortunate hand. This is close. I mean, two lands, and we've got a smorgasbord of good, solid, cheap cards. But I think we got a mulligan. One landers are a rough thing to keep, even on the draw. Uh, this hand is better. It's going to keep. I think we're going to put that on the bottom. I want to find either cheap action or lands, and totally lost is not either of those things. Essence Scatter might have to be our our cheap play <laughs> to try and interact with my opponent. If we get something like Counter and Enigma Drake, we're going to feel pretty okay this game. Omen Speaker, good for setting up. Not like a crazy aggressive start, but still good. Okay. I'm using Essence Scatter here on whatever. Who my opponent may be missing on red. No play and no swing. It's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep up our essence scatter. So we do have Siege Breaker Giant and eventually Lathless. If we find another couple of lands here, we have found double red, which is nice. And those do tend to kill your opponent pretty quickly if they've got sleep. Oh, okay. Yeah, uncontrolled chill, drawing a card. Speaker gonna get in this time? Yeah. I think my opponent just accidentally clicked through it last get turn. Ah, okay. Still missing. Goblin Instigator means we still get to keep up the Essence Scatter, which is kind of nice. It also means my opponent at least can't attack with their own speaker. Oh, okay. Sure. If that's getting Essence Scattered, that's not that sad for me. Would much rather hit our Instigator over our Siege Breaker Giant. <laughs> Omen Speaker beat down. Incoming. Okay. Well, missed on the land, unfortunately, so I guess we'll just sit on our hands. Both we and our opponent are having a, a tough time here. <laughs> we do have Essence Scatter if they find something. And if we find a land, all of a sudden we've got a bunch of good plays, so... Uh, do we want to risk a Gutter Snipe? Yeah, I don't hate that. I think that we'll probably be able to Essence Scatter something later on this game if my opponent misses another land. Oh, Bone Dash. That's true, they did have four up. Ooh. On the other hand, maybe that was going to hit something else anyway. Still missing on red. Salvager of Secrets getting back Bone Dash, I imagine? Yep. Okay, well we know about it. We draw a land, we get to get play the Siege Breaker Giant next turn, and at least that's a scary threat on its own. Especially backed up by a Sure Strike. Yeah, my opponent's having a tough time. We... It's going to be rough playing around Bone Dash here, though. Another land. Yeah, I don't think we, we walk into it. So I think I'm actually going to tap down the Salvager Secrets and make my opponent think maybe we don't have a trick. I think that's actually not terrible. My opponent's not going to double block, probably, anyway. And this bluffs effectively. Oh, well, we used our... Uh, oops. We should have kept a blue for Essence Scatter. That was our, uh, our plan there. Okay, well, that goes on top of the library. We feel sad. Oh, the auto-tap got me again. Gets me every time, that darn auto-tap. And they drew a mountain! Oh no! Oh no, the auto-tap. I would really, really like to essence scatter something here. Crash through? Oh, that was unexpected. They just have no creatures in hand? Well, I guess we wouldn't have done it anyway. Uh... Man, are we have to bite the bullet here? I guess, probably. Oh, I feel so bad. My opponent just doesn't have to play anything. Like, we have to eat Bone Dash, probably. In which case, I think we want our other bigger flyers more. Uh, we bust the song, Siege Breaker Giant. I thought we'd snuck it through, but the card advantage. The card advantage. So we take a hit, we go into 10. We hope my opponent does not have more counter magic. We play Lathless. If my opponent can't counter it, Red does have a tough time dealing with a 6-6. Like, this is a legit bomb. Ugh, double Bone Dash. Ugh. Uh, Enigma Drake, everything's huge. And an Aven Wind Mage, oh no. Uh, so we play Horizon Scholar with the intent to block the Enigma Drake. If we do that, we're accepting as much as maybe like six damage on the crackback. We play Lathless, my opponent 
has a spell, it's worse because we probably have to trade for Enigma Drake. Ugh, I think it's close, but I think I want to play the Skull. Well, maybe we need to play Lathless and make sure we trade with the Drake. If my opponent has any interaction, we're dead kind of either way. Yeah, I think we play the Horizon Scholar first and then try and stabilize after we trade with the Enigma Drake, maybe. Okay, we can put both those on bottom so we can't play the Luminous Bonds. Hmm. This is going to be a, a stretch, I think, to victory here. Again, like, Disperse gets us. There's a ton of cards that just loses the game. And Tormenting Voice doesn't do it on its own. My opponent is still kind of stuck on red. They found a mountain off that. What'd they pitch? <laughs> Crash through? Okay. Yeah, I think the Drake's very large. <laughs> yeah, let's block. We take six, go to four. Okay, yeah. Ugh. Okay, so we got into two. No, or three, I guess. I can do math. Uh Lathless, we're dead. Disperse that. Sleep. Mm, I guess there's no reason not to sleep. Man, not having that essence scatter. Oh no, I guess we didn't have that turn anyway. Alright. Sleep. Not really sure how we finagle a, a victory out of this, but well. We'll wait. Who knows? Maybe we can get a little bit more uh, value out of knowing my opponent's deck as well. They already knew about the sleeves, so. Spark Tone Dragon. Ooh, alright. Three damage to any target. Good game. I have to imagine my opponent's shooting us in the face. Yep. Alright, very, very quickly dead. Eh. Had a opponent had a better lower curve and we just could not get through those counter spells even with them being stuck on colors that's tough i feel like that's a game that we should be able to win for as long as it took my opponent to really get online but all the same uh, let's jump back into the game okay so this hand is good it's a little bit land light it's kind of funny we are playing 17 lands but it feels like we've had a lot of low land draws couldn't keep though i think with uh one or two land draws this hand becomes pretty good pretty quickly and if my opponent has a slow start, Fiatino Pyromancer might be able to get it done on its own, so... I don't think I'm unhappy keeping this. It's not like the nut or anything, but... I totally lost is not a good draw. Let's draw... a land. Come on, say it with me, a land. Talking to your deck, I feel like, is really the answer to most things. Come on, land, 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 land. Give it to me. Give it to me, give me that sweet land. Fermenting voice points pitches a oh oh tragedy. All right, well it's pyromancer. Continue shooting my opponent in the face. Gutter snipe plus sleep is a way that we can win even if we are a little bit stuck on tempo here. But yeah, missing that second land. Our third land drop was unfortunate. Ooh, an aviation pioneer is beaten here. Okay, we did hit a land though. Did hit a land. So. I think Gutter Snipe actually might be better than Enigma Drake. Is this likely to get in for any points of damage? Enigma Drake's not doing anything for a little bit other than maybe blocking a Thopter. Is blocking a Thopter valuable? It's not nothing. Gutter Snipe, we're not sleeping next turn almost for sure. I guess if my opponent plays just a random creature, we sleep, my opponent goes down to 12. We swing. Actually, that's kind of a lot. If I went to six, then maybe totally well, I totally lost his little bit of ways away. I think it's still better than Enigma Drake though. Depending on what we draw, maybe we can go pretty aggressive at that point. Cutter's Night plus Sleep is a like considerable amount of burst damage. Mm hmm. I think the land was important there for sure. Okay, they missed. That makes me think Bone to Ash. Could be have Electrify though too. Don't really want to run into Bone to Ash. We could just sleep for a lot of damage here. If they have an Electrify, we still get in for six and kind of force them to probably play something next turn. In which case we can maybe get like our Enigma Drake or Snapping Drake online. Yeah, I think I'm gonna sleep. It's not going for lethal, which maybe is a mistake, but it does play around Bone to Ash, which I like. If they've got Electrify, it's not the end of the world. Like, denying my opponent mana here. Oh, interesting. Cancel. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, not gonna attack them. 
Did not expect the cancel, but worked out okay there. We got a, a one for one with a little bit of extra damage, which isn't bad. Maybe again, force my opponent to play something here. Yeah, they can't have Bone Dash anymore. They did play a land, right? Did they not? I can't remember. I guess we'll find out if they play another land. <laughs> I think they did. Okay. Essence Scatter. So I think we're just going to try and nail our Snapping Drake here. And hope there's no more counter magic. Again, at least we're not getting two for one if they've got something like Essence Scatter. Enigma Drake is still just a 1-4. Okay. Yeah, still no great attacks. And honestly, the Ashino Pyromancer is not super, super likely to have good attacks going forward. Well, it's got a lot of good blockers for them. And we no longer have sleep, so. Ooh, okay, my pulse divinating. That's a good card, but that does mean they probably can't answer Snapping Drake this turn. And maybe can't answer Enigma Drake this turn, and we'll have Essence Scatter up. That all sounds nice. So let's just swing with our Drake. We could swing with Gutter Snipe and try and totally lost. That doesn't seem fantastic. Both of these are pretty good Enter the Battlefield activities, and I'm pretty sure that's how they block. Let's just swing with our Snapping Drake. Get him, boy. Okay, and opponent's taking it and going down to 9, I imagine. And we're going to play an Enigma Drake, and we do. We are keeping up blue there, which I guess we have to because one of them's going to be red, but always terrified of the Magic Online or the Magic Arena auto tapper. Okay, and we're going to end the turn. And we're going to end the turn, but maybe I just want to scatter something if I opponent has got. They want to just play like Horizon Scholar or something great here. I'll feel happy about myself. We want to get rid of an Omen Speaker. I don't know if we care that much, honestly. The Scry is good, but we'd much rather hit a big threat, and we're not getting through on the ground at this point anyway. Like, all of our hopes are in Snapping Drake, Enigma Drake, and Gutter Snipe activations. Okay, Pwn Scry 2 to the top. That's ambitious. Okay. So there's no way we can go for lethal here, right? If we swing with all three of these, Pwn blocks, 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 that would be assuming we totally lost it, the Thopter first. Got in for 5, 7, it's pretty close. We get to Essence Scatter next turn, we maybe can. Let's go to our attacks. Swing with our Flyers. Would have loved to have Essence Scattered something next turn to make our Enigma Drake a little bit bigger. A Electrify doesn't seem crazy unlikely. Totally lost. Okay. Don't think we actually can do too much about that, so we're just let it resolve. That's good for my opponent, but not the worst for us either. Again, with Gutter Snipe in play, that is kind of a ticking time bomb. My opponent did scry two to the top, though, with Omen Speaker, which is scary. Hopefully they're playing like a great big evil threat here. Okay, upon trading with the Thopter, or willing to hit blows. Ooh, wow, it didn't go for this with haste? That's weird. Uh, we're gonna Essence Scatter the... Wow, my opponent didn't go for it with haste. Hmm. Why? Why wouldn't they? Okay, do we have lethal now, assuming my opponent doesn't have anything? We bounce an Omen Speaker. We take my opponent down to four, down to one. We have enough swingers. I think we're going for it here. I'm scared of what my opponent could still have. There's not too much. Disperse, I guess, gets us. They have Disperse, exactly. Then they go, like, block. Hmm. They have Disperse, exactly. There's two cards left in hand. Would well, they have played a Disperse earlier in the game? Probably not. Assuming we have drawn it in the last couple of turns. Could just play Snapping Drake and play it cool. We could swing for two. Take my opponent down to four. Why would they swing with the Thopter there? Feels like that just opens you up to so much. We remove that, they bounce that. We still replay at the end of the turn. I think, I don't know, I think I'm gonna go for it. If they have exactly Disperse, it's bad for us in that we're not winning the game. But it's not like tragedy either. And we're probably losing like, we lose Gutter Snape. Eh. All right, we're going for it though. No Disperse. 
Okay, trading with pyromancers. Because they're not getting rid of gutter snipe, which is nice. Maybe they couldn't. All right, uh, we we got him. No disperse from the opponent. Whew. Plus one as well. Hey, we're gonna still get a chance of going all the way here. I am excited. This is, I guess, match six with that in mind. Four and one. Sweet five and one record. Here we come. Back for match six. All comes down to this. Come on. Come on. I really want that. Five wins. Man, I don't know about this hand, though. Need to find red. It's the same situation. Although if we miss for a couple turns, we have Essence Scatter, maybe nothing else. If we hit red, it's good. If we don't hit red, it's pretty bad. And we have a lot fewer good blue draws than we do red. Like if we find like Horizon Scholar, Snapping Drakes and the like, that's just not fantastic. I think this hand would be an easy mulligan except for Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter makes me think that, you know, maybe we miss for a couple of turns, we can still put something together. I think all in all this is still a mulligan though, but it's it's close. We are playing against the one, the only, Yogmoth Fart. Very esteemed gentleman in the community, I'm sure. I do appreciate the name, if nothing else. Ugh, man, this hand's better, I guess. Let's go ahead and keep. Oh, uh, yeah, we're gonna put that on top. So, let's go ahead and draw it. Next turn we get to play by Viachino Pyromancer the, the hard way here. Luminous Bonds is a dead card, at least for now, but we do have a... Fishing with Pyromancer and a Disperse, and the potential to drop for like an Electrify. This, this hand could get there. I would have to have kind of a bad draw, for being honest, but bad draws do happen. Since we're kind of down to three cards in hand, and one's a land, and two are pretty reactive. Uh, man, I hate mulliganing on the play. Just feels like you have no action in your hand. Well, actually, Disperse might be at its best in this matchup. It's just looking like my opponent might be in the line for a an Auras sort of deck in green-white. Let's go ahead and swing, and pass the turn here. I think trading damage for damage is usually going to be a good thing for this deck, since we do have random incidental damage like Pyromancer or just Flyers that can maybe finish the game. Yeah. Hmm. My opponent didn't go for an Aura. Don't think I want to use Disperse. First, take it here and go down. Okay, now we have Electrify. Could try and like set up a Sure Strike if my opponent doesn't have a trick. Actually, I think I maybe sit on our hands now. We have enough instant speed answers that if my opponent goes for like an Aura here, we can really get them. If they go for like a Rabid Bite, we could get them. If we Sure Strike and they have a Combat Trick, we could get them, or at least kind of get them. Eh, I guess it's not that great. We could have attacked into the Courser. My opponent may have blocked. Yeah, this feels happier. Do we want to use Disperse and then try and Sure Strike into the Courser? I actually kind of like that more than I like keeping Electrify up, I think. Especially because I think my opponent's very likely to go for the attack. Okay, well, helping to undo our uh, Mulligan here. Go ahead and go to Blocks. Alright, and we have a lot of spells in the graveyard. One Enigma Drake is now pretty big. That's, that's cool, right? That's cool. Another Pyromancer is not the worst. Take my opponent down to a nice low 12 here. We have one card in hand, but it's a very good card. One has six cards in hand. <laughs> Probably better than our one very good card, to be fair, but... I mean, we got draws, we got draws, like... Snapping Drake's good here, Enigma Drake's good here. Even Sleep's probably pretty good here. Okay. And the land's not my favorite. I think we're getting in with the Pyromancers. Come on. Oh, I probably will just block here, but I think I have to accept that trade. Oh, it gets a two for one with a little bit of value out of it. We could have electrified, but I don't know if that's quite correct. Oh, it does look to be a little bit stuck on white. Well, I take it all back. That rocks Oracle. That beautiful, beautiful extra draw step probably got him there. Uh, that in there. I shouldn't say him. Uh, rocks Oracle again. Ugh. This is just like a smack in the face. Do we electrify now? No, I don't think we do. Ooh, well, there's an Enigma Drake. I think me an Enigma Drake. Let's go ahead and go to attacks. 
Again, I don't think it's impossible my opponent blocks. If they're not blocking this time, that might mean they have an aura, in which case maybe we need to leave up Electrify. Okay, they're not doing it this time. So what sort of aura do they have? If they've got... Let's see if they have Oakland Form. We swing down to 11. But they play Oaken Form, we electrify whatever else they have, we've got 6 damage on board, and we probably can win that race, right? Probably? We're not getting maximum value. They have Oaken Form plus Rabid Bite, we just weep forever, but... This has been a... We've, I think we've been fighting an uphill battle this whole game, so... Any little bit of equity that we can scrape out is good. We have drawn, like, relatively well, despite having Illuminous Bonds in our opening hand. And only five cards, kind of, because of it. But it could be considering going for an aura and wondering how bad Shock is for them. The answer is it was very bad. Okay, well, Declare Dominance to take out the Drake is good. Would have rather electrified there, but... Tis what it is. Does he's up my opponent's entire turn, we get to hit him with the Pyromancer. That was bad for us, though. Hmm. Maybe we still sit on Electrify? Yeah, maybe they've got another trick or something. Maybe we should have gone for it last turn. Maybe Enigma Drake was greedy? Eh, no. I don't know. Declare Dominance is a pretty unique effect. If they just had like any random aura, I think we'd have been okay there. Uh, you know you want to. You're only thinking about it because you got an aura. Yeah. Value train. I at least got to undo the extra card that my opponent drew off the Oracle. We're super out of cards, but again, I, I feel like we're drawing live. Like, yeah, that's fine. I ain't blocking. Aw, oh, man, Rejuvenator. What even is that card? Really good against Pyromancer. One toughness creatures are a real liability in this format. Aw, oh, man, Essence Scatter. Alright, maybe we are trading with Pride Mate now. Essence scatter away something big, maybe. Hmm. Promise I kinda wanna draw a white source, but I also it's gonna be tap no matter how we look at it. Alright, fine. I think we're blocking now. Just very unlikely to get in on offense. And we may find our way back to parity here. Ugh. I wanna scatter that. I don't think we do. It just gets blanked by a lot of draws that we could have. They have another play. I won't really want to counter that. I don't know. We're accepting an extra two points of damage a turn, which is not nothing. But we're at 16. I think our Essence Scatter might be able to snipe something better. And if we scattered that and then my opponent plays like another Rocks Oracle, we were getting wrecked pretty hard. Yeah, a lot of lands here, but I'm playing them. Lathless is a thing. If we find, like, Crash Through or Anticipate, we do want to play potentially a large creature after that. Also being able to play Essence Scatter in addition is not bad, and my opponent's not real likely to have Discard here. Yeah, we'll go down to 10. What you got? What you got? Gotta have some play, I'd imagine. No? Well, there's Lathless. And we actually even have Essence Scatter up after that? That's pretty sweet. Hopefully there's no, like, main deck plummet, I would cry. Just a little bit. Well, Atlas is, like, lethal. <laughs> if they can't answer it. Uh, Luminous Bond still gets us. Can't do much about that, unfortunately. But Atlas is a heck of a draw there. Can it take down the fart? That's the real question. Opponent can maybe bluff attack? Hmm. I think I might block the Rejuvenator. Do we want to block? Let's see. If they've got the plus four plus four, I really don't want to get eaten by it. If they've got plus four plus four and like a Rabid Bite, what are the odds that we die here? Not real high, right? In which case, if my opponent had removal, they'd use it before combat. Right? So if they had like Luminous Bonds, they'd just remove it. If they have Rabid Bite, we don't want to play into it. If my opponent has like two tricks, we die to it. Although we're probably dead anyway. I think I'm just not blocking. I think it's probably a bluff, but... Inspired Charge. Eh, yeah, maybe they do. They have, like, one more effect like that and we lose. Not quite enough. Ooh, man, the Anticipation's killing me. It's killing me here. 
cleansing Nova. Alright. Well, it's not a card that I think you play around. It is a rare after all, but that is good there. I think we actually have to <laughs> essence scatter this. Alright. Opponent's got no cards. Oh man, we got Luminous Bonds next turn. Wrecked. One Enigma Drake. It's gonna win the game. I got faith. Horizon Scholar off the top. We got we're we got we're drawn out. Oh man, what it took two creatures? No! That's not fair. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. <laughs> oh no. I think we do have to live in his pods. Oh, tragedy. And try and double block. And hope my opponent just continues to draw like billions of lands. <laughs> we fought back so hard. Why the Gallant Cavalry off the top? Oh, my heart. No! Oh. All right. Stupid. Stupid. Shenanigans all around. Where were you, Gutter Snipe? Gosh darn it. All right. <laughs> well, that was at least a humorous end to the game. Ah. Oh. Now we have to go two one. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we both know I'm not sideboarding anything. And my opponent hopefully is not just jamming a, a billion plummets. Because this deck is pretty soft to plummet. We were close though. We had a kind of a rough keep and it was off a of mulligan. Ah, this hand looks fine. Let's go ahead and keep. It's a little bit slow, but we have two removal spells and a reasonable threat, so not so bad, not so bad. Start off with our meandering river, of course. And no Leonin, no Leonin. Cool. I like sleep too, although I'd like to find some more threats before we play it. But just having sleep gives me that nice cozy feeling that a lot of times we're going to be able to Miza win. Pride Mate did not seem to have a whole lot of buffs. It just sort of felt like a 2-2 in this matchup. And most of the light gains in black, most of it. We could bonds here. Not sure I like bondsing though. We're accepting two, four, maybe six damage at that point. Do we, maybe we just don't have a great block against this for a little while. Maybe we do luminous bonds. Probably gonna be like six damage, and it's maybe gets even bigger at some point. Hmm, it's close. If we didn't have the electrify, I think I'd probably not go for it there. And actually, that was probably bad too, because my opponent's playing a bunch of auras. Luminous bonds probably has a lot of utility. Yeah, okay. I take it all back. So my opponent had gone for like, well, on the other hand, Leon and Vanguard. Well, I think we're doing Snap and Drake at this point. We could go on Instigator and keep up like Sure Strike, but I think this is better. My opponent's gonna get to gain a life. This will get a little bit bigger, and we'll take two. But this is more mana efficient, probably. Gallant Cavalry. Okay, good card. Pretty good against our hand here, too. Sure. We go down to 18. Yeah, it looks like this is maybe less auras and more just like green, white, go, go wide. Which is not bad. So, how much work does Instigator do for us? Actually, not that much, right? I think we do want to swing with our Drake. The question is if we're crashing through or doing something else. If we crash through, I guess we're really hoping to find a red source for the Instigator. It's kind of not great. We probably want to try and double block with this, unlike the Vanguard. So, I guess let's just play Instigator and get in for three. And we're gonna hope that we manage to like not quite lose. Hmm. And maybe manage to like sleep and finish off my opponent. Opponent's got a pretty impressive board state here, though. This is not not looking great for us. We're much better against single individual threats. We don't do super, super well against flooding the board. Hey, yeah, there's the Angel of Dawn. That is bad for us. <laughs> Okay, so we are accepting 9 damage here. I think we're just accepting it. Okay. Go down to 9. I think we have to sleep this turn. Let's see. Well, I guess not necessarily. We could Electrify the Angel of Dawn. 
Swing with Snapping Drake take my opponent down to 16. If they have a group pump spell, we're in trouble. We can chump block with the instigators to stay alive. I think I want to electrify. I think we need to keep the Snapping Drake alive since I think that's our only real path to victory. Is that plus like sleep plus like sure strike? Hmm. This deck plays a lot better. Well, like sleep is just so much better if we're we're on the beat down here. So the Goblin Instigators represent four damage with sleep, probably. Snapping Drake is gonna get in twice. So that plus sure strike, that's 13, assuming my opponent doesn't have any plays. I'm trying to figure out right now if we can play around the plus two plus one inspired charge. If they have it, we just die. Open form. Okay. Not as bad as inspired charges for us. Do have to chump block though. Rest in peace, dear instigator. I guess we should use the token. There's an outside chance we'd want to bounce this at some point. It's not real likely, but. Should give ourselves that option going forward. Okay, so let's crash through first. Another sure strike. We don't have another red source for it right now. Okay, sleep. Take my opponent down to 13. If we find a red source, like, we're... Yeah, we're still a little bit short, aren't we? I mean, we're taking them to 10 at that point. Rock's Oracle. Yeah, I think this is grim. Let's say we could like chump block the Gallant Cavalry maybe for a turn and try and set it up with the Snapping Drake. We're gonna need something good here. Uh, Enigma Drake isn't bad. So let's see. This is currently 3-4, right? Yeah, 3-4. We can't keep up Sure Strike, unfortunately. We play Enigma Drake. We like block there, chump there. Take three, take my opponent down. Is there any way we can keep the Drake alive? I don't think so, not without Sure Strike. I think that's still our best line, though. I think I need to swing with Snapping Drake. Let's see, if we play the Enigma Drake and try and trade there, we give up on three damage. But then we get back two of it from Sure Strike. Yeah, it doesn't seem very good. It swing and try and sure strike that out of the way, but that just doesn't do that much. Yeah, okay. Snapping Drake. I'll try not to use up too much time here, too, since I think our odds of victory are not particularly high. My opponent makes like a conservative swing this next turn. Not real likely, though. We don't have to trade away Enigma Drake. Like, we could be showing off Disperse. I'm not sure if we showed my opponent my disperse. I don't think. Oh no, we did. Yeah, because we used it in response to an open form, right? Or was that an earlier game? Oh, man, too many things at this point. I think it was last match. Yeah, no, it was because disperse was in our opening hand. That potentially makes for kind of a. Ooh, well, all right. <laughs> Nothing matters. Nothing really matters to me. We're not using the luminous bonds on the pride mate. Probably was good, but. All right. Rest in peace, our life total. Robbed ever so short of the finish line, but yeah, two short strikes I think was not great for the deck. Not really sure we should have played over them, but I could see even being like playing our Catalyst Elemental or something maybe being better. Because we did end up losing, missing out there. So, 4-2, not disastrous for sure, but not as exciting as the 5-1. Five, five that would have been pretty sweet. Let's claim our prize though, a whole bunch of core boosters, and I've been thinking I need to do another pack opening here, so let me buy some packs and I'll be back for a pack opening. Alright, so we got 30 sweet packs here, let's do a 3 opens of 10s, those are exciting right, I like, I like to see those rares. And ooh, yeah, nice, Johnny, Liliana, which I still kind of want to break, I'm not sure if she's really breakable, we actually got a lot of mythics here. Johnny, Tezzeret's cool, Liliana, a mythic and a rare wild card. Feels pretty good. And let's open another 10. And I'm also going to talk about the deck at the end of this. I kind of forgot, but we'll have to go over that. Oh, oops. We opened one. Oh, no. Now I have to go all the way through. 10 of them. Okay. That misclick, though. At least it wasn't in a game. That's okay. It's kind of fun to open them individually, too. Another couple. Sarkin's cool. Another card that would be fun to screw around with. Maybe we'll try to make a mill deck with patient rebuilding. That's probably really bad, right? Probably. That's okay, though. 
All right, let's open too many of these. Too many of these. Spit flame, good card. Who knows, maybe you can put together some sort of dragony deck. I have seen some crazy stuff with Sarkin online, so that seems pretty cool. Oh, for those of you that are wondering as well, um, I am still waiting a little bit for the last few people to take the survey and get in, but I'll probably talk next time, I guess, about the results for that, if you guys are interested. Probably put it at the end of the video, because I'm not sure that's something that most folks want to see, but for those of you that are still with me, you're, you're probably the, the few that actually are interested, so... Okay, yeah, still some like solid stuff. I really kind of want to do the 10, though. This, this is taking a minute. <laughs> Ooh, Transmorgifying Wand. Oh my goodness. Those Ox, though. Those Ox. Pillar Field Ox is like my wife's favorite card in the world, so... That's basically three Pillar Field Oxes in one. Okay, yeah. Cards. Cards. I think those first couple were our most exciting. Got some good wild cards. But I mean, maybe it just looks that way, because there was all the rares at once. Okay, let's talk about our deck here. Sorry, there's still no great way, I don't think, to view the deck list in Magic Arena, so you guys have to settle for this kind of gross layout. I think the deck was pretty solid overall. It was funny getting as many Enigma Drakes as we did, since I don't think that's something you're going to see all that often. I mean, three of any uncommon is pretty rare, and in a dual-colored card, like kind of kind of the marquee card for this archetype. I don't really know how real blue-red spells is most of the time in the format, but having three Enigma Drakes and a Gutter Snipe definitely goes a long way for that, and I think a lot of the games that we won were off the power of those two cards. Sleep's obviously just still a house. Every time I played this card, I was impressed by it. Even when we were far behind, like, it bought us time in a way that basically no other card would. So, it didn't pull us back from the brink very often, but I think it is better than a lot of cards would be in those situations as well. Lathis is still good. Had a couple of chances to play with her. She's sweet. Yeah, I think overall pretty fine. If I could... Do anything with three Enigma Drakes, I definitely would have had more crash throughs, maybe a couple more like random anticipates and the like to really get these guys online. But overall it was solid. The only cards I was really unhappy with were the Fishino Pyromancer, which was pretty lackluster. One toughness is just brutal in this format. And Anaki Ogre was not fantastic either. But overall, pretty solid deck. Not sure the Splashing Luminous Bonds was correct. We definitely had a couple of games where I got stuck in our hand and the one extra removal spell didn't often seem to make the difference in a game either. Hard to say, uh, that might just be a little bit anecdotal, a little bit sample size, but the tapped lands kind of hurt a little bit, and Luminous Bonds also kind of hurt a little bit, so maybe not correct. In any case, I really do appreciate everyone that stuck around to the end here, everyone that's watching. You guys are the best, I don't say that enough, and I say it a lot, which just means that you guys really, really are the best, the best, the best. And I will see you guys next time.